Well met, stranger. You find yourself in the presence of the renowned wizarding prodigy, Gale of Waterdeep. Please, no need to be intimidated. My virtuosic talents once caught the eye of the goddess of magic herself, Mistra, who named me her chosen and her lover. Thanks to a slight miscalculation on my part, that relationship eventually soured, as did the greatest of my powers. Now I'm merely a humble wizard on the road to redemption. Unless I can find the path to something greater. Soul appears dormant. The console hums to life. Suddenly, you feel a hideous squirming in your head. The parasite. Then discomfort fades, and another sensation washes over you. Connection. Authority. your command and yield to it. A shiver runs across your mind. You feel sated. like there's plenty of fighting ahead. Let me come with you. We can get off this ship and watch each other's backs along the way. Shadowheart. One moment. Finally. Let us make for the helm. We've wasted enough time already. She's right. Lead on. Oh. 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 
Deal with the Geich after we escape. Connect the nerves. Nerves. We will connect them. The Helm's alien transponder. You've made it in time. As you wake, the tadpole squirms in your skull. Other than the infection, you're more or less intact. A miracle, given everything you've been through, but it'll all be for nothing if you don't find help soon. The tadpole is a death sentence, and the clock is ticking. You need a cure. the ship. I remember falling. Then nothing. No, I don't recognize this place. But anything's an improvement on where we just came from. First things first, we need supplies, shelter, and most of all, a healer. We might have escaped, but we still have these little monsters in our heads. We need each other. And we both know what's at stake. Can't think of better company. One thing, just before we go. I wanted to thank you again for freeing me. It would have been all too easy for you to run right past my pod, but you didn't. I'll remember that. Lead the way. There's goblins over there. It's kind of worth checking for supplies, maybe. Looks unstable somehow. Approach the sigil on the stone. Magic glitters and swirls from it erratically. 
as if malfunctioning. It looks slightly dangerous. Just your average traveler stuck between realms. Pull me out, and we'll get properly introduced. Ow! Perhaps I should have clarified? Hmm? A helping hand? Anyone? Gale of Waterdeep. Apologies. I'm usually better at this. At magic. Say, but I know you, don't I? In a manner of speaking. You were on the Nautiloid as well. Then I can only assume you too were on the receiving end of a rather unwelcome insertion in the ocular region. No use sugarcoating it, is there? The insertee we speak of, this parasite, are you aware that after a period of excruciating gestation, it will turn us into mind flayers? It's a process known as ceramorphosis, and let me assure you, it is to be avoided. You don't happen to be a cleric by any chance, do you? A doctor? Surgeon? Uncannily adroit with a knitting needle? You seem to know enough about our condition to realize it's beyond most cleric's skills. Most, no doubt. But I find myself hoping to be in the presence of the few. You don't happen to be one of them. As we've established, few enough can. It's not exactly a common affliction. We're most certainly going to need a healer, and soon, too. How about we lend each other a helping hand once more and look for a healer together? Most excellent. A parasite shared is a parasite halved. Or something to that effect. Oh, but before you think you're about to embark on a journey with most ill-mannered a man, thank you for pulling me out of that stone. It was an act of foresighted kindness, I assure you. I have the feeling ample opportunities will present themselves for me to return the favor. Hello, over here. Hurry, I've got one of those brain things cornered. There, in the grass. You can kill it, can't you? Like you killed the others? There. Can you see it? Shh. Not a sound. Not if you want to keep that darling neck of yours. And you. Keep your distance. No need for this to get messy. Couldn't agree more. But if you use that knife, I will incinerate you. And your friend with me? Hardly. Now, I saw you on the ship, didn't I? Nod. Splendid. And now you're going to tell me exactly what you and those tentacled freaks did to me. Don't lie to me. I... Ah! Your mind twists. 
You're looking out of unfamiliar eyes, prowling dark, busy streets. You try to hold the memory, but it fades to the worm. The light, the fear. Uh, what was that? What's going on? You're not one of them. They took you. Just the same as me. And to think, I was ready to decorate the ground with your innards. <laughs> Apologies. Indeed we are. Please, allow me to introduce myself. My name's Astarian. I was in Baldur's Gate when those beasts snatched me. Is that so? We clearly move in different circles. So, do you know anything about these worms? Turn us into... <laughs> of course it'll turn me into a monster. What else did I expect? Although, it hasn't happened yet. If we can find an expert, someone that can control these things, there might still be time. You know, I was ready to go this alone, but maybe sticking with the herd isn't such a bad idea. And you seem like a useful person to know. All right, I accept. Lead on. Another joins our merry band. We'll need to keep our wits sharp around him, I think. Let's see. I hail from Waterdeep, City of Splendors. I am a wizard of considerable acclaim and scholar of exceptional accomplishment. I have a cat, a library, and a weakness for a good glass of wine. And if the mood takes me, I'm known to try my hand at poetry. There. Didn't that paint enough of a picture? There, a mind flayer. And it's hurt. Approach with extreme caution. An injured mind flayer is still a dangerous one. You approach the dying monster. This is the thing that abducted you. You could end its life here and now, if only you didn't feel compassion. Compassion. You can't move, can't think. Thinking is mercifully done for you. It will be a joy to serve, to die for it an honor. It's possessing your mind, forcing you to love it. But then the feeling slips. The creature's mind seems to focus elsewhere. The monster lies exhausted, defeated. Its eyes, wet orange pearls, radiate malice. Monster. Death is too good for it. The tadpole hasn't yet scrambled all your senses. Auspicious. But the longer we wait, the more it consumes. My people possess the cure for this infection. I must find a crash. You will join me. It is many things. A hatchery, a training grounds, a shelter. Githyanki protocol is clear. When infected with a gay tadpole, we must report to Augustil for purification. You may as well suggest a wyvern bow to worms. The cure I offer will suffice as thanks. You have made an ally from Kreshkalir. Few know such fortune. 
Call me Lazel. Come. The Horned Ones mentioned a camp. One there, this Zoru, has seen Githyanki. A crash must be near. We will ask this Zoru where he has seen my kin. A Githyanki joining our company. Not a collaboration I'd have anticipated, but a welcome one nonetheless. Ancient, indecipherable text covers the plaque. A dead tongue. Whoever worshipped here must be long gone. Armed scribes. But no sign of a struggle. I wonder what was so subversive about their words that they commanded protection. Let's have a look at myself. It's still me. Even after everything. Not bad. I've had better days. And worse ones. No harm reflecting on one's appearance. Looking magical, as always. They didn't want to surrender their valuables, even after death. Let's have a look at the loot. It isn't for your pockets only. Go to hell. Ha! <laughs> You're a good sport. Go to hell. An everyday expression. So trivial, it's almost meaningless. But we've seen hell. It's real. And it isn't trivial. Devils, dragons, mind flayers. They used to be abstracts. Pictures on a piece of paper. What a difference a day makes. Now we have tadpoles slithering through our heads like carnivorous feti. That's not abstract. That's the spirit. Let's be up with the lark. Find a healer before the wee one gets hungry. Your magician seems dour tonight. Must not relish the idea of sprouting tentacles. Understandable. Can't say I'm a fan either. It's just hard to join in when all of this feels so new. The night normally means bustling streets, bursting taverns. Curling up in the dirt and resting is, um, a little novel. I'm in no place to rest yet. Today has been a lot. I need some time to think things through. To process this. You sleep. I'll keep watch. The pleasure is all mine. Sweet dreams. What were you two talking about? I see. I'd be careful with Gale. He's a wizard. All they care about is power. Let's hope we rapidly find a healer. You seem reliable. I think you know how important it is that we find someone who can cure us. Best if we focus on that. Good. We might even get lucky and find one right away. As I see it, we're overdue some good fortune. Rest well. I hear shouting up ahead. We should check it out, but be careful. Where is that bastard? Quite the fortifications for a wandering band of goblins to try and breach. What drove them to it, I wonder? I just wonder if the grubby little beasts had any friends. And if they're nearby... I'm more worried about this parasite than a few goblins. We need a healer. I've never had cause to visit a druid's grove before. Magic weighs heavier here. Seeking solace in root and soil. 
Grounding, one might say. Forgive that display. Aladdin's a blowhard, but that's no cause for me to join him. Thank you for your help out there. I'm Zevlor. Well met. I should warn you, visitors are no longer welcome in this grove. Whatever your business, I'd see to it quickly. The druids are forcing everyone out. This attack will only strengthen their resolve. There have been several attacks by different monsters. The druids blame us outsiders for drawing them here. Nobody's welcome anymore. They've started a ritual to cut the grove off from the world outside. We can't stay, but we'll be slaughtered if we leave. We're no fighters. I've tried. Korga, their new first druid, won't even see me. You, though? I know it's not your business, but she owes you for saving this place. Perhaps you could persuade her for more time to prepare, if nothing else. I think you should. Yes. No harm in trying the diplomatic route. We'd owe you a great debt. If we're forced to leave now, we won't make it to the city. You'll find the druids at the heart of the grove. Please, make them see sense before more lives are lost. How many people are dumb enough to ask? We should have left by now. Damnation! Instead, we're just sitting here, practically begging to be attacked. Staying is a mistake. And what about us? There's every chance we've doomed ourselves by helping these people. We will end up fodder for some goblin's blade, all because Leah insists on helping every wounded fall we see. Our best chance to make it to Baldur's Gate is on our own. This place is lost. You are looking at Laroican's newest apprentice. Yes, that Laroican, the greatest wizard in Baldur's Gate. I've heard that name before. A young man, yes? Lives in Ramazes Tower in the other city. The very same. Word in Waterdeep has it he's a bit of a cad. But you say he's an accomplished wizard? Of course he is. The greatest spellcaster along the Sword Coast. As if I'd settle for a lesser mentor. In that case, I'd very much appreciate it if you could arrange an introduction, should we reach the city. Common gossip. The byproducts of ignorance and jealousy. I've admired Laroican for years. Never dreamed he'd answer my letter. But I've worked myself to the bone for this. Few can match me in either magic or talent. The names Roland and Laroican will be known far and wide. You'll see. My thunder wave will make quick work of any goblin. Just you wait. Just so you know, my first duty is Karlak. I'm oath-bound to go after her. But I won't deny this infection is bothersome. I accept your invitation. You'll need to make room if you want to partner up, though. Still, when the time comes, call for the blade. I won't be long to answer. A splendid plan. We'll talk more there. I've known a few warlocks in my time. Talented, of course, though sometimes too eager to listen to the devils on their shoulders. <laughs> Comes with the territory, unfortunately. You ain't gonna shoot me. Your hands are shaking. Put it down. She can't fight back. That's the point. Get out of the way. She didn't kill your brother, Arca. You're better than this. Shoot before you lose your nerve, Tieflin. If you ever had it to begin with. Looks like the Absolute sent me a protector. You gonna kill her too? <laughs> you, move!
Comfort? Is that what you think I'm after? Never mind. Don't answer that. But why do you care if a goblin lives or dies? If you believe anything the beast tells you, you're an idiot. It's all right, Arca. Let's go. Believe it or not, but I witnessed a similar standoff back at the Yawning Portal. Of course, an establishment like that invites all sorts of outlandish entertainments. An inn in Waterdeep. Ooh, never a dull moment there. Adventurers come from all over Faerun to try their luck down the well. Leads into the Undermountain, you see. Full of death, danger, and vast amounts of treasure. Hard to resist. Oh, a drow, a dragonborn, and a cleric of Cyric walk into a bar. Your standard fare. Maybe someone was cheating at cards. Maybe it was some weird lover's quarrel. In any case, out came the crossbow, and a hush fell over the entire room. I stood up and yelled, Shadow Dark Ale for everyone! The crowd cheered! The tension drained into five dozen tankards, and soon all was well again. In a place like the Yawning Portal, the most powerful magic is calling for a round of drinks. Mind you, all I did was call for ale, but you went and stood in front of that crossbow. Well, I'd drink to that. <laughs> Indulging in a spot of vanity. Handsome devil, aren't I? Be that as it may. Ceramorphosis. What does it make you think of? Spot on. Day one, fever and memory loss. Day two, hallucinations and graying skin. Day three, hair loss and blood leaking from all orifices. Need to go on? Day four, excruciating pain as the skeleton and organs reform and reposition. Day five, the host personality has disappeared, fingers and toes and limbs elongate. I take it you get the picture? Day six, the flesh around the mouth splits to make way for tentacles. Day seven, a mind flayer is born. Spot on again. Our orifices remain blissfully unblooded, our heads remain clear, and our blood temperature normal. Any expert will agree this is abnormal. I'll toast to that. The pragmatic in me, however, sees only the silence before the storm. Something to sleep on. We should get some rest. I saw you getting a lecture from our magical friend. I have to say, I thought you'd look worse, but no. Not a tentacle to be seen. Naturally, but I was thinking, what if it doesn't? Of course, first sign of change, and I'll have to stop that pretty little heart of yours. I am open to suggestions, Knives, poison, strangulation, whatever you'd prefer. I don't think poison is for me, nor stabbing, come to think of it. I always felt decapitation was a fine choice. One good swing and then nothing. <laughs> but we were talking about you. What'll it be? A fine choice. Now, to use sword or axe, or saw, hmm, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is all a worst-case scenario, obviously. 
If the last day has taught me anything, it's that the impossible is more likely than you think. Now, let's get some rest. The sooner we start tomorrow, the better our chances of keeping this hypothetical. Tell me, Lazo, when you say we might be purified at your crash, what does that mean exactly? Augusto will affix the Zaphisk, the purifier, to our heads. Its magic will quell the parasite in an instant. That Zaphisk you mentioned intrigues me. Care to tell me a bit more? An intricate device crafted by Millar, our most gifted artisans. I am sworn to say no more. Tell me, Lazel, what is it like on the astral plane? Your home realm intrigues me. Githyanki lay their eggs on other planes. They cannot mature in the astral. I will only be welcomed once I obtain a Mind Flayer's head. I can't stop the bleeding, Bray. You're a true soul. You can't die. Please, stay with us. I, I don't think he's conscious. C can you hear us, Ed? You, not a step closer. A strange symbol glows marked on their flesh, and something within you stirs in response. He's hurt badly. An oil bear got him deep. If there's anything you can do... I'm watching you. The injured man locks eyes with you. A familiar squirming churns in your head. Your minds intertwine. You see his siblings, Andrik and Brenna. New recruits. Yours to shepherd. Protect them. She is a true soul. Mind her. She will... She... She... Edwin! Ed! Please! He's with the Absolute now. You're... You're a true soul. Edwin, our brother. He was chosen. Like you. Do you have orders for us? We were reporting to Edwin. What? Are you... Are you testing us? The Absolute is our goddess. She's going to rip down the old world order, start a new one. Then we'll be the ones with the power. Well, you will firstly, Trussel. You don't need me to explain that. A true soul like you, has been chosen by the Absolute. You speak with her voice, and when the time comes, the true souls, you, will rule. That fellow had a tadpole in his head, and they consider him blessed? Chosen? What madness is this? I'm sorry, true soul. I only repeated what I thought I knew. It seems the Absolute still has a great deal to teach me. What? What are you doing? Your sword, brother! Now! Strange power resonates within the corpse. It calls to you. its host's memories go to waste. The tadpole has absorbed it all. Its experience could nourish you, strengthen you. Oh,
hosts as soon as they need to. Vile parasites. I wish mine would give up so easily. Though without requiring such extreme motivation, of course. Tell me, Gale, what is your interest in the astral plane? Time. Or rather, the absence of it. In the astral plane, everything is eternal. It will be my home soon enough, should Vlacketh will it. Prowess in battle is remarkable, as is your battle stance itself. Rathajak, a technique known to few outside Kalir. Shall I teach you? I'll pass, thank you. I prefer abjuration over acrobatics. Good morning. How do you feel? It'll pass. Just be glad I'm not a true vampire. A bite from them and you might wake up as a vampire spawn. Like my good self. All of a vampire's hunger, but few of their powers. Oh no. I should be cinders in this light. I hadn't seen the sun for 200 years before we crashed here. Someone, or something, wants me alive. They've changed the rules. Standing in the sun, wading through a river, wandering into homes without an invitation. They're all perfectly mundane activities now. As for my other quirks, well, <laughs> we can figure those out in time. That's my theory, but who knows? I'm just glad you're being sensible about these uh, revelations. I was worried people might turn up with torches and pitchforks. Although there's still time. A vampire among us? So be it. But should I wake with so much as a drop of blood on my neck, I will end him. Oh. And a quick word of warning, Astarian. I taste absolutely awful. Keep your distance. Oh, quite the opposite. I'm here in the spirit of openness and honesty to work together as a team. You say all the right words, but I'm not so sure you mean the right things. Still, I will respect the decision that was made. There now. We're all friends again. Shall we go? There's a long day ahead of us. How can I help? We all have our burdens. One way or the other. I am enjoying our walks together. Aren't you, Dan? Um, sure. In silence. Dead goblins. Dead travelers. Were they heading to the druid's grove? You're an impressive <laughs> fighter, Gale. You should consider a new name. <clears throat> Take it you have some suggestions. The <clears throat> Wizard Wonder. Or how about the Master of the Week? Tempting. But I think we might already have the maximum number of theatrical titles. <sighs> Cub looks from you to his dead mother. A single strike will end his suffering. You watch, speechless, as the cub begins to eat his mother. The cub has a fighting chance now. That, or well, we've just prolonged its misery. Looks like a shrine to Saluna over there. A wizard sealed this chest. 
Wasn't an amateur either. Still no symptoms. No sign of tentacles so far. The same. Except for a knot of worry in my stomach that's in no rush to go away. That I can relate to. The road to Baldur's Gate is a long one. Who knows how long it'll take these folks to get their own foot. If they make it. They're slow. Vulnerable. Half or more will die long before Basilisk Gate. Doesn't seem to trouble you a jot. What good would it do for me to be troubled? We can't save them all. Tiring business, isn't it? All this traveling and adventuring. Why don't we take a little break, hmm? Allow ourselves a few moments of rest? Gives me a chance to talk to you about something. Well, rather important. We've been on the road together for a while now, haven't we? Hmm? Survived some perils, overcame some obstacles. Ever since you were kind enough to free me from that stone, I've seen you demonstrate remarkable guile and courage. The way you diffuse the tension between Zevlor and Aradin. In short, I've grown to trust you. The reason I make a point of saying this is that I've grown confident enough to tell you something I've yet to tell another living soul, except for my cat. You see, I have this condition. Very different from the parasite we share, but just as deadly. Thank you for the offer, but the treatment for my condition is very specific. What it comes down to is this. Every so often, I need to get my hands on a powerful magical item and absorb the weave inside. I can say no more on the matter. Not now, anyway. Just trust me when I say it's all of vital importance. It's been days since I last consumed an artifact, since before we were abducted. It's only a matter of time before my craving returns. That is why I turn to you. I need you to help me find magic items to consume. It is vital. Dare I say it? Critical. You have my thanks. And fear not. Your implicit trust is well placed and will be rewarded with any and all means at my disposal. I'm sure we won't have to look very far to find what I need. Faerun overflows with magic-infused treasure. As do our packs, as a matter of fact. We have such an item already in our possession. Primed for the moment the need arises. I hope I can count on you. How can I help? Think of it as... tribute. The kind a king might pay to a more powerful neighbor to avoid invasion. As long as I pay, there will be peace. But should I ever stop, along comes a war. I can assure you, the battlefield would extend well beyond the borders of my body alone. Your enterprising approach to my problem is most encouraging. But it is a delicate process to keep my condition stable. I do not yet need to consume an item, but keep it close by. It will not be too much longer. There you are. I was just thinking about you. And that delicious moment we shared the other night. The very same. I've had this condition for two centuries, but truth be told, <clears throat> you're my first. In all these years, I've only ever fed on beasts. Drinking the blood of thinking creatures is a different thing entirely. You were delectable. And now I can't help but wonder how the others taste. Alas, it doesn't hurt to ponder the question, though. Take Gale, for example. He strikes me as someone whose blood is rich, refined like well-aged brandy. 
But the gift. What in the hells would she taste like? Hmm. Oh. Well, that sounds very appealing. I'm almost convinced. No one's getting killed, I swear. We're just two friends talking. So, in the spirit of theoretical questions, if you had to take a bite from one of them, who would it be? Ah, a refined palate. I can't disagree. Although, the more I think on it, the hungrier I get. I better go find something I can actually get my teeth into. Uh, there's nothing that tasty lurking out in the woods, but I'll make do. Uh, sweet dreams. Is someone singing? It's beautiful. me find a boy called Donny tell him you want to see the dragon's lair that scamp reminds me of myself when I was a nipper always getting into trouble and worse one time my parents denied me a kitten so I summoned myself a tressim Ah, oh, dear old Tara. Beautiful creature. Benefits of a wizard's education, you see. Of course, my considerable talent didn't hurt either. Well, that depends on who you ask, I suppose. I may have summoned things rather more exotic than a winged cat. There was that magma method once. Nice fellow, we kept in touch. Of course, in walked the housekeeper, screaming, yelling, panic, and before you know it, fire everywhere. Anyway, I'm glad we got that boy out of his predicament. Poor lad would have been harpy feed if it wasn't for you. We need to get Arabella out, now! You heard the guards. They're waiting on Corker to give word. I'd sooner trek through the nine hells than trust that snake! Ugh! Arabella tried to steal their idol. Druids lost their damn minds about it. They need it for their precious ritual. Oh, it's all my fault. I told her I wished the wretched thing would just disappear, or better yet, explode. Now Arabella's being judged by a bunch of druids who hate us. That's not right. This grove is like a cauldron about to boil over. I say we check in on the child, make sure she comes to no harm. Thank you. They won't give us the time of day. Hurry! I'm at the end of my tether as is. Can't take this waiting! Please! I'm 
sorry. This is madness, Korga. She's just a... A what, Wrath? A thief? A poison? A threat? I will imprison the devil. And I will cast out every stranger. Girl. You mean parasite. She eats our food, drinks our water, then steals our most holy idol in thanks. Wrath, lock her up. She remains here until the rite is complete. And keep still, devil. Teela is restless. Come, Korga. We took back the idol. Surely... Do it. I hear the Tree Father's spirit in your words. It is as you say. Sivisif, Teela, to me. Out, thief. My grace has its limits. Thank you, Korga. Master Halsin... Halsin isn't here. Keep his name off your tongue, lest Teela pierce it. That woman has more venom in her heart than a snake in its fangs. But at least the child is safe. What is youth if not a time to be forgiven for one's transgressions? Couldn't agree more. The girl wasn't innocent, but that doesn't mean she was guilty. The thing is, I've sent birds to find him, but the place is rotten with goblins. None of us can even get close. You, though, you're one of them. Technically speaking, I mean. They won't kill someone carrying their parasite. If you can find Halston and get him out of there, we can discover what he learned. And perhaps he can save your life. How's that sound? Thank you. It would mean everything to the Grove. To me. I wish I could tell you more. But only those adventurers know what happened out there. All I can say for sure is they all went to the old temple of Saluna. And Master Halson didn't make it back. Good luck out there. And if things start to go bad, remember the vial. Remember your oath. Take one step at a time, Nettie. Come on. Wyvern for you. It's lethal stuff. Let's hope we won't have to sample its delights. Better a quick draft than seromorphosis, nonetheless. Something of a potential would be mind flayer myself. Couldn't agree more. Devil Will has been tasked to kill. Me! Never been better. Oh, fuck me. It's you, from the Nautiloid. Please tell me I found you before those so-called Paladins of Tear did. Now that's a story, and I'll tell it to you, but truth be told, we shouldn't stay here too long. See, these paladins of... A great heat roars through you, her heat, fiery as the hells. Then you're lost in visions of demonic armies, as you tear through a landscape of fire and blood. The Blood War. You saw it from above as the Nautiloid passed through Avernus. This woman was on the front line. Mountains as far as the eye can see. Guess that explains the voices. From that peak I got into your head, you've made some inroads trying to get the thing sorted. But alas, no joy. I'm Karlak, and you are... Well met, soldier. Now that we're old pals, how would you feel about helping me kill some evil bastards? A little background, if your moral compass needs something to point at. You already know I fought in the Blood War. 
I was good at killing demons. Really good. So good, Zariel, the archdevil herself, made me her personal attack dog. I played along until I could get the fuck out of there. It took me ten years to probably escape, but now I'm free. Zariel sent goon after goon to hunt me down. But believe me when I tell you, I'm not going. The latest yappy little dog she sicked on me are nearby. A group of dopes posing as paladins of tear. Wanna help me take them down? Fuck yes. They cornered me outside the toll house just up the hill. Doubt they've gone far after the scorching I gave them. After we've mopped them up, we can work on evicting this parasite and take Faerun by the short hairs. Sound good? She's, uh, perhaps a little rough around the edges. But I suppose I can be smooth enough for two. <laughs> I'd hug you if it wouldn't scorch your skin off. Looks like your troops all trooped up. You'll need to send someone packing if you want me to join. Let's hop. I suppose you've any clue where we are in relation to Waterdeep? From this distance between Elturel and Alder's Gate, I'd say a long way away. Ah. I will make getting word to my mother rather tricky. No matter. What she doesn't know can't hurt her. Not at this distance, anyway. An ally fresh from the hells themselves. Hmm. Our company grows stranger by the minute. And all the better for it. Thank goodness that's all dealt with. The odds are stacked high enough against us already. No need to turn on each other. Oh. My. You startled me. I, uh... Miles away. Not praying. Not quite. I was just practicing an incantation. What can I say? She's. She's Mistra. I can't quite describe it. The need. I sometimes feel to see her. To draw the filaments of fantasy into existence. No sculpture or painting could ever do her justice. Only the fabric that she herself is. And embodies. The weave. Mistra is all magic. And as far as I'm concerned, she is all creation. I see you understand. Magic is... My life. I've been in touch with the Weave for as long as I can remember. There's nothing like it. It's like music, poetry, physical beauty, all rolled into one and given expression through the senses. Would you like to experience this? Then follow my lead. Now you. A familiar feeling. Like a kind word and a kind touch at the same time. It's warm and comfortable. Excellent. Now, repeat after me. Athra Mistra Ril Kantrak Eo. Ah, yes. 
the scent of rose water and a sense of well-being. A sliver of weave that tastes sweet on the tongue. Very good. Now, I want you to picture in your mind the concept of harmony. As true as you can. You see, or is it sense, the unmistakable presence of Mistra, the Lady of Mysteries. There's something like the anticipation of a kiss, then the pleasure of being cloaked in peace. You are safe. You are nestled in the cup of Mistra's hand. <laughs> you did it! You're channeling the weave! How does it feel? Quite so. The weave is a sensitive conduit. The weave connects you. The moment feels intimate. You realize the weave is making you one. You have but to imagine your desire, and Gale will know it. I... I didn't think. You perceive quick-fire gusts of embarrassment, trepidation, and finally, elation. Sorry, I wasn't expecting... But it is a pleasant image, to be sure. Most pleasant, in fact. Most welcome. The weave evaporates. And as it does so, you realize the night feels suddenly cold and lonesome. Oh. There it goes. How easily things slip away from us. No matter how hard they were in the obtaining. Good night. I enjoyed sharing a moment of magic with you. Always a delight to speak with you. What can I do? I assure you it's not. Don't get me wrong, you did well. The somatic component, the verbal component, even the focus on the inner self that invites Mistra in. But I was still your conduit. To perform such a feat alone requires much and arduous study. Of course, as a cleric, your patron deity endows you with many such powers otherwise unattainable. I do hope you cherish that gift. Oh, I was surprised, but pleasantly so. Just like I said, amid the madness that has befallen us, it seems almost out of place to think of a romantic walk. And yet, now more than ever, it's important to recall what makes us human. A stolen glance, that sudden heartbeat. Sometimes the little things are worth more than kingdoms. They promise things to come. to speak slowly. I'm finding it quite difficult to concentrate with my condition gnawing at my insides like a teething displacer kitten. That is most gratifying to hear. May I? Thank you. Magic, it's like a lullaby that sings to sleep the demon inside. A metaphorical demon, I haste to point out, but no less dangerous. And no less bound to wake up again to continue its ravages. Such is the nature of all monsters. Oh, it's not so bad once you get used to it. And, on the plus side, my tower in Waterdeep has never been so free of clutter. Hmm. Sincerely, though, I understand I ask a lot from you with few answers in return. But in time, all will be told. 
My lady, I bow to your boundless kindness. I like Gale, but I'm keeping all my good gear well out of sight. Everything fancy he touches meets a grisly end. I've known people who are hungry for power, but Gale takes it a bit too literally for my liking. I wonder how he does it. Why he does it. <laughs> I'm sure all will be revealed in time, but I don't like it. A waste of perfectly good treasure. Gale slurped that thing up like a horse with a carrot. I hope he got what he needed from it. Gale is positively voracious. Well, let him suck up all the magic he needs, as long as he doesn't snack on a Githyanki silver sword. So, Gale just consumes magical items like I do wine. We truly are a group apart. Nevertheless, as quirks go, that's a new one for me. It says there's a cellar here somewhere. I don't see one. Must have been pretty young when it was killed, this cave bear. Rather sad, really. I feel a breeze. I wonder what's down there. Well, after you. Bugbear and an ogre. One moment they were embracing each other in intimacy. The next they're embracing only death. Oil burns in the fires of Avernus. The lightning storms of Dis strike his flesh. His soul passes through each layer of the hells, gaining their essence and their torment. have you done the promise broken a price paid you know the terms get used to the new form pet there's no going back some magic even I can't undo now let's see how the frontiers fare without their precious blade Karlak keep an eye on him would you I'll be keeping mine on you. Oh, and Will, don't forget, our pact still stands. Ta-ta. I can't help feeling Will got off lightly. The wrath of the Hells is second only to the wrath of the Heavens. Having a devil in our camp will certainly make things interesting. Never a dull day, is there? My, my, what manner of place is this? A path to redemption? Or a road to damnation? Hard to say, for your journey is just beginning. What would suit the occasion? Hmm. The words to a lullaby, perhaps? The mouse smiled brightly. It outfoxed the cat. Then down came the claw. And that, love, was that. <laughs> they do know how to write them in Cormir, don't they? Well met, I am Raphael. Very much at your service. Neither. The fox, rather. Hiding, in a word. A silent observer. 
about to break the silence. Of course, what I have to say merits some privacy, as well as some more, let's call it, refinement. This quaint little scene is decidedly too middle of nowhere for my tastes. Come. There, middle of somewhere. I don't like this at all. The house of hope, where the tired come to rest and the famished come to feed lavishly. Go on, partake, enjoy your supper. After all, it might just be your last. Call it a ninth sense. What's better than a devil you don't know? <laughs> a devil you do. Fuck. A cambion. Am I a friend? Potentially. An adversary. Conceivably. But a savior, that's for certain. Because my compassion is boundless, I stride among the needy, giving comfort where I can. And you're in dire need. One skull, two tenants, and no solution in sight. I could fix it all like that. Take all the time you need, but make up your mind before you're counting down with tentacles. Try to cure yourself. Shop around. Beg, borrow, and steal. Exhaust every possibility until none are left. And when hope has been whittled down to the very marrow of despair, that's when you'll come knocking on my door. Hope. <laughs> Such a tease. That's what separates us from the devil, soldier. They think our greatest strength is a weakness. I'll be around, watching you squirm like a tadpole through a nice, juicy brain. All those pretty little symptoms, sundering skin, dissolving guts, they haven't manifested yet, have they? One might say, you're a paragon of luck. I'll be there when it runs out. Do you feel as flattered as I do? Fight it to dine with a devil. <laughs> um, I've never met a devil, but of course I've read a great deal about them. Even feigning a mortal form, it was easy to detect the whiff of sulfur about him. Mm, to spot the flicker of hellfire in his eyes. Don't let his bluster fool you. All that talk of desperation merely illustrates his own. I think he wants something from us badly. And in that knowledge lies our opportunity. Our souls. But I suspect that's but his opening offer. Let me play the devil's advocate. The man is too eager. Do not dismiss his offer out of hand. If there's one quality all the denizens of the hells embody, it's ambition. A quality they share with many humans, come to think of it. By figuring out his true intentions. Fact one, there's something very strange and very powerful about our tadpoles. Fact two, a devil offers to take it away. 
Devils aren't known to aid mortals out of simple kindness. Whatever Raphael wants, we must be the key to getting it, along with our tadpoles. So, I say for now, we wait. If I'm right, Raphael will seek us out again, and when he does, there's a mighty bargain to be made. Remember his Cormirian rhyme? Down came the claw. Perhaps we should start growing our nails. Something tore right through these people. Didn't stand a chance. My condition is worsening again. I need to consume some powerful magic or it may become volatile. Thank you. It is a strange experience. Each time anew, like a lost soul is spelunking through the darkness that is me, only to be sacrificed on the dread altar of the heart. Somehow the second artifact hasn't had the effect of the first. It's somewhat relieved the discomfort, but I fear my hunger hasn't quite... Ah! You do plenty for me, more than you realize. But this cannot be remedied. <clears throat> the magic isn't having the effect it should have. It's not like the last time, like a rainstorm that quells a forest fire. It merely drizzles. The embers still sizzle, the fire remains undefeated. I'm not certain what's going on, but nothing good. Please, I need to think. I need to retrace my steps to a glade of calm and think. Thank you for the artifact. A great deal of trouble it was too. A great deal of trouble indeed. Place is overrun with gnolls. I had no idea this was their mating season. This place reeks of blood. Let's go before more join us. Smoke. Something's burning. I hear shouting. Someone needs help. Drow craft armor. No magic left, though. Sun's too bright. Bah! A lamp without a ginny is like a sphinx without a riddle. Always a disappointment. My condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. And soon. Thank you. any effect. Oh, Mr. have mercy on us all. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. I might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. And what one might call a wizard prodigy who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it. Much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself. The Lady of Mysteries. The Goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time she became my muse. And later even my lover. Oh yes. We enjoyed each other's company, body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. 
Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. I swore my ambition was only to serve her better. But she only smiled and told me to be contented. But inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess. And yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. And he almost managed, but not quite. And his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal. Roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured then shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms, until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought, until, in the course of my studies, I learned of a book, a netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? You know me. My gestures can never be grand enough. I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in, into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound and suddenly opened. Inside there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. What is it? What do you see? Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. Rather worse, actually. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it'd level a city the size of Waterdeep. We might chance upon a king's collection of magical artifacts around the corner. We might cross paths with a miracle round the bend. 
Then again, we might not. All of this, it must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. You'd have us debate that Netherese Jack in the Box should be a blip on the horizon by now. Absolutely. <laughs> We're all risky in our own ways. We stick together anyway, right? That is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. I stand at a precipice. But if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now, even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. Gales had this devastating war within himself the entire time, and only just mentioned it. Who'd keep a secret like that from his friends? He can't trust anyone these days. Sir Gale's been walking around this whole time with some sort of magic bomb in his chest. I'm not normally one to begrudge someone their secrets, but that's something I should know. I do enjoy our conversations. What do you need? Ah, oh, yes. Carsus. Carsus was perhaps the most powerful wizard that ever lived. The child who would be a god, the elves called him. And he tried. With a spell of his own devising, he endeavored to usurp in one fell swoop the power of the goddess of magic. Mistril she was called then. Imagine what it must have felt like to be a god, to know yourself, to be untouchable, to be mistaken. As Carsus aimed his spell at her, she began to unravel, and with her, the entire weave. Too late did he realize what he had unleashed. It would have been the end of everything had not Mistral sacrificed herself. The goddess of magic is all magic. By dying, the entire weave was lost, and the spell that challenged a god failed. It was the end of Mistral, the end of Carsus, and the end of an entire civilization. As the child who would be a god was turned to stone, his empire came crashing down around him. The floating cities of Netheril were no more, an event that came to be known as Carsus's folly. Quite so. Now, so many centuries later, I try to follow in the footsteps of Carsus. Not to destroy Mistra, but to prove my love for her. I try to control only a fraction of the magic that was unleashed that fateful day. I merely sought to return one tiny diamond to an imperfect crown. Gale's folly, one might call it. History. Repetition. It's the way things go. If it should ever come to that, if I ever know I am no longer able to stop it, I will do anything I can to ensure no one but me pays for my mistakes. I will find the remotest place on the surface of Faerun, or perhaps far below in the depths of the Underdark. I will await that death, alone. I promise I will not betray your trust. You kept me by your side despite the menace that I am. If worse comes to worst, I will be long gone before the curtain falls. That orb seems powerful. What can it do once it's extracted? Nothing good can come of it unless it is contained. Why? It might be useful. Who knows? A dragon rider. My kin are near. Damn thing could blot out the sun. I suggest we admire it from afar. 
You go a lifetime without seeing one, and then they won't stop pestering you. Gith Yankee patrolling these wilds is an unexpected surprise. Whatever they seek, they'll not hesitate to kill us if we stand in their way. In oh, my stars! I, I didn't mean for this to happen. She's their little sister, and she's staying with me. This is all my fault. But I made a promise. Mayrina begged me not to breathe the word if they came looking for her. And my word is my bond. That poor thing would be distraught. We can't let her know it would break her poor heart. I'd best get going, but please stop by my house. I'd like to thank you proper. I think there's a little something more to Ethel than meets the eye. A chill runs up your spine. You feel like you're being watched. Like where this is going. There's a rather jaunty hat lying in the mud there. And a sword, too. Someone must have been in quite the hurry to get out of this swamp. Careful where you tread here. A hag's magic is not to be trifled with. I'll find him and bring him back. Thanks. But we'll need more than luck. A bloody miracle, more like it. I'll find a wizard or something. Maybe someone in Baldur's Gate can help us. Connor always said you can find anything in that city. Remember? And thank you, I guess. Come on, love. Let's go. Perhaps using Ethel's wand wasn't the best idea. Pity. It's beyond even the power of the weave to help now. Goblins ahead. A war drum. One of those can summon fighters far and wide. Look it, Claw. Sapper's here. Unless you've got another reason to be here. Feck sight. Let's try to be diplomatic, shall we? Goblins don't come by the handfuls, but by the dozens. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. Um, down, Claw! Bad girl! Your mind lurches, reeling suddenly as if bitten. Easy, lads. We got a true soul coming through. I don't know any house in your excelness. Oh, one of them thieves. If he ain't dead. He's in the pits with the rest of them. Down in the pits, no less. Sounds ominous among creatures that love blood sports. Better step to it. Lads are celebrating the raid on Joaquin's rest. We kept it a duke, we did. All the way from the city. I, I'm sure the higher-ups will make sure you get the best of the spoils, your excelness. The boss is in the temple inside. Mithara, too. And, and Priestess Gug can show you how many new recruits we got.
So the tadpole gives us the ability to influence others. Taking away the free will of others could be a gift or a curse in disguise. <laughs> Nonsense. Any power freely given is a power well received, and this is a valuable power indeed. A little caution may be advised. The power may prove valuable, or it might not. We simply don't know. A wise choice under the circumstances. Recognize the overwhelming authority that you've used on others, only infinitely stronger. Your vision clouds, leaving you in a dark, featureless shadowscape, nothingness in every direction. Then there are three figures before you an armored male elf exuding power and command, a handsome younger man with a quick, easy smile and a pale young woman with even paler eyes. These are my chosen. They speak for me. Aid their search for the weapon, and you will be worthy to stand beside them in my presence. The visions fade and the voice falters as a strange energy swells around you. The many-sided artifact. Somehow you understand it's repelling the presence. My power grows. My forces gather. The reckoning draws near. That thing's shielding us. Incredible. Whatever power the artifact possesses, it shows no sign of it now. Goblins aren't known for their cleanliness, but by Mistress Mantle, this place is rotten. The fewer breaths we take here, the better. Heavy. Moisture drips down your forehead. Pain shoots through your fingers. The ache builds as you squeeze your hands together. Were your fingers always so thick? Your skin always so sticky? Chukilgate Vlaketh Mazathok! Can you feel it crawling through you? Tendrils squirming in your chest, gripping your heart, piercing your belly, your bones popping, your flesh swelling. I can. I see it in you. I feel it in me. We are lost. I will be quick with my blade. First you, then the others, then myself. Your minds intertwine. You sense a touch of uncertainty, a touch of disgust. Bah! I cannot trust my own mind, so it seems I must trust yours. I will wait, but know this, I am watching. If the sickness does not pass come dawn, I will end us all. I came just in time. You are transforming.
Yes, you have. I saved you before. And I'm here to save you again. Don't worry. You will not become a Mind Flayer. Not while I'm around. I'll protect you. We haven't much time, so listen closely. There is great potential within you. It comes from that parasite. Your instinct is to resist the power it gives, but you must accept it. Nurture it. I will keep it from consuming you, but for the sake of both of us, you must learn to wield it. for the fate of Faerun, a fight we are losing, for now. You can change that, but only if you embrace your potential. I have to go. The enemy is closing in. I will be back. Apologies. Huh. Not quite myself just yet. I had the strangest dream last night. A visitor came to me. A vision of unparalleled beauty and power. She told me she was watching over me, protecting me, and that our tadpoles could prove beneficial if we embrace what powers they have to offer. An uncanny apparition. I'm not entirely sure what to make of it. Very curious. In all my readings on the effects of illithid parasites, I've never come across any accounts of correlating dreams between infected parties. Another unique quality of our predicament, perhaps. Hmm. Are you inclined to take these visitors at their word? If so, we have far more to learn about the powers at play here. Our ignorance as to the exact nature and intent of our saviors is hardly cause for celebration. I hope your confidence proves well-founded. God knows we could use all the help we can get. This one is a true soul parasite. It can enhance you. You can absorb its potential. Open your mind to it. You already know how. Your mind swells as it subsumes everything the tadpole has to offer. Everything it was and everything it was destined to be. Pure potential. Pure power. Good. You have grown your power and improved your chances of survival. Come on, then. Don't leave me in suspense. How are you feeling? No errant tentacles? No sudden cravings for a more cerebral diet? Wonderful. Advantages are a more precious commodity than I'd have hoped, given the nature of our predicament. I commend you on your willingness to take such a risk. Now, let's hope your new illithid fuel prowess tipped the balance suitably in our favor. Was there another matter you wish to discuss? Now here's somebody special. 
The Absolute has touched you, hasn't she? Priestess Gut needs to touch you too. Hold out your arm so I can mark your flesh. Let's the faithful recognize one another quick sharp. That way nobody'll mess with you. And it's charged with magic. Ordinary slobs can't see it. Only us that follow the Absolute. Charged with magic? Perhaps that explains the ease with which these goblins submit to true souls. You ready? Brace yourself. This'll sting. Maybe you don't need it. After all, you're special, ain't ya? Like me. She probes your mind, tangling your thoughts with hers. A familiar sensation. She too carries a parasite. Darkness seems to swallow the temple, leaving you with a vision of the goblin priestess receiving instruction from a handsome young man, one of the chosen. The vision dissolves away. You stand before the goblin priestess in the temple once again. Your minds brush against one another, but are swiftly parted. Don't want to get intimate in front of the novices. Fair enough. Got some weird shadows in your head. Maybe I can help with that. Us true souls gotta look out for one another. Of course. Don't want this rabble interfering with true soul business. Let's go to my chapel. Oi! Priestess! People like us. We want them all. Why do they think they're talking yeah. to a god? Good enough, as long as we're possessed of our own free will, I venture to say there's hope for us yet. Greetings, child. I've met few aside from goblins here. You recognize the scourge. This man is a follower of Leviathan, goddess of pain. Ah, are you also here to assist with the prisoner? Please, the things they do to that man, so crude and primitive. I was invited to teach them. I live for pain and its intricacies, you see, but alas. Pain without purpose is a terrible thing. Wouldn't you agree? Ah! You are familiar with the Scourge Mistress. Good. I am simply spreading her message, friend. I worship her through pain. Usually my own. But I have a skilled hand when it comes to its infliction. Care to expand your horizons? It will be worth it. You have my word. Your hide, your choice. Not quite my cup of tea, though. My, an eager student indeed. Those are advanced devotions. The mistress would approve. Indicate which instrument calls to you, and let us put it to work. Oh, I do believe we are both going to enjoy this. Both Loviatar and I are interested in how you handle pain, dear one. And should you delight her, you will most assuredly receive her most gracious blessing. Trust me. Simply face the wall, and we can begin. Yes, this will do nicely. The pain you suffer will cleanse you. Do not fight it. Don't. 
Your voice sounds so sweet, dear one. Keep going. Pain is proof that we live. Revel in it. That's it, dear one. Let Leviata hear you. You are doing so well. Do not give in now. Yes, you can, child. Take the pain and offer it up to Loviata. Offer it all. Sweet child, you bore the pain like a true believer. I could feel Loviata's pleasure with every sting of my scourge. I am proud to have served you this penance. Interesting is an understatement, dear one. Loviata herself found your performance inspiring. She has deemed you worthy of her blessing. On a personal note, thank you. That was positively divine. Well, whatever you're into. That was not what I expected to see today. Fuck! Complaining! A scrying eye. Better be on our best behavior. Till we're out of sight, that is. I promised I'd be back. Don't worry. I have things under control. For now. I see you've been using the powers the tadpole gives you. Good. But things haven't gone as you expected. You hoped a druid as powerful as Halsin might be able to remove your tadpole. But he couldn't. You're desperate to be rid of it. Understandable. But you're looking for solutions in the wrong places. It's complicated, but I'm an adventurer, just like you. Just like you, I was infected with a Mind Flayer parasite. Just like you, I seek to be free of it. But to do that, we'll need to think beyond local healers. Your parasite is unusual. It is wrapped in magic that prevents its removal. Until the source of the tadpole's magic is destroyed, any attempt to remove it will kill you. You were lucky that Halsin knew this. His instincts are right. The parasites are merely a symptom of a greater sickness in Faerun. <sighs> the absolute sames are not yet clear to me. But its progress towards domination is clear. These parasites are more than a lithid spawn. They are vessels for control. The infected hear the voice of the Absolute and believe it to be a god. That is how the cult of the Absolute is spreading. The highest of their rank, the True Souls, carry a tadpole just like yours. It is how they receive their orders. 
It is what makes them obey. When the order to transform is given, it will not be a matter of days. They will be Mind Flayers in an instant. Were it not for my protection, so would you. I have powers of my own. Unique powers. But know that we are alike. I've been trying to escape from this evil for a long time. Once, I almost succeeded. Now, through you, I've been given a new chance. You can go where I cannot, and I can protect you from that evil. If we work together, we may turn this around. Hells, they need me. I have to go. The power I use to protect you, I stole it from someone. They want it back. I will hold them off for as long as I can, but sooner or later I will be worn down. You must discover the source of the magic that controls the parasites before that happens. The cultists are gathering at Moonrise Towers. Use the powers your parasite gives you to convince them you are one of them. And when you find the source of their magic, destroy it. Go. Our freedom depends on it. I've been dreaming of our enigmatic visitor again. She told me our purpose was to take on this cult of the Absolute, to infiltrate its ranks and bring it down from the inside. She even offered me greater powers. The result of some manipulation of the tadpole's psionic abilities. Given the magnitude of what we're up against, I see no harm in considering the benefit this offer might afford us. Could be the only way to reach this source in one piece. As existential evils go, the Absolute certainly seems an adversary worth holding in its tracks. Any opportunities for us to indulge our tadpole's capabilities are hardly on the same scale. Trifles, when one considers the bigger picture. But imagine what we might achieve if we channeled some of that hostility back at our real foes, instead of each other. They wouldn't stand a chance. I'll say one thing for our troop. We're not short on drama. I'm glad Shadowheart and Lazel settled their differences peacefully. Eventually. You recognize the feathered creature. It's the owlbear cup you rescued. The cub's eyes lock onto the food in your hand. The creature gulps the food down. It seems he hasn't eaten in some time. The hand that feeds is the hand that's loved. It'll never leave your side now. Stand corrected. You seem to know a good deal about our condition, Gail. Everything, really. Not to put too fine a point on it. A humble specimen, aren't you? On occasion. I admire your courage, Gail. Thank you. Any particular reason? Between the orb and the bug, You've got more than your fair share of unwelcome passengers. What can I say? Mother always taught me to be a gracious host. Ever heard of a vampire called Casador? Well, I don't think so. Why? Friend of yours? He's patriarch of the Tsar family. Nasty fellow, if the histories are accurate. I imagine they are. The cub holds out his leg, revealing a ragged wound. A 
As the wound closes, the cub begins testing his weight on the leg. You do realize these things grow, do you not? Teeth and talons first. A scout just reported. The goblin's leadership has been decimated. We might escape this place yet. And I hear you are the one to thank. I'm grateful. I took a collection from all of us. It isn't much, but you've earned it. Very good of you. Thank you. Halsin will likely want to thank you too, mind. He returned just a while ago. I believe he's catching up with Corker. As for us... No armies at our heels. Amazing. We can finally leave. But perhaps we need not speak of farewells. We'll join your camp tonight to celebrate if you'll have us. I nearly dispatched those goblins myself, but it seems you managed well enough. And why wield a masterwork where a butcher's blade will do? My thanks, truly. Patience? Have you no respect for showmanship? Having performance issues, Roland. Hush you, and behold! Adoring applause? You're too kind. Remember when he could barely cast that? They grow up so fast. Never have I met such troglodytes. Now, pass the wine. An adoring crowd, fine wine. I dare say this place is almost civilized. Not at all. But perhaps Leah had a point. What is the point in blades and spells if we don't use them? Though we won't need either soon. As Leroican's apprentice, I'll take care of everything. Beautiful night, don't you think? Nothing like a brush with destruction to make one appreciate the majesty of a celestial canvas. It's a view I would once have shared with my companion. Though definitely unaccompanied by such revelry. She preferred it when we were alone. Curled up before a crackling hearth with some ancient esoteric tome between us. Ink glinting in the firelight. <laughs> By a Geron's lost nose! No! I speak of Tara, my Tressen, assistant. My constant companion through all the ills and tribulations my hubris has thrust upon me. She'd be most impressed by our efforts saving these tieflings. Proud, even. And I've given her little to be proud of recently. After I was afflicted with my condition, I locked myself in my tower for an entire year. It was inconsolable. Wallowing in my self-inflicted tragedy. I've given up on myself. Tara never did. It was her encouragement, her research that led me to my treatment. Once we knew that magically infused items were the key, she went out to find them for me. She saved my life. After so long being cared for by someone else, it feels good to have repaid the favor. Not directly to Tara, but to these poor tieflings. I'm sure she would approve. Remind me of her somewhat. There's a steeliness in you. An unwavering tenacity, even in the face of, to be frank, quite dire odds. Wish she were here for me to make a formal introduction. But I would never ask her to undertake such a journey. She's safer at home. Besides, she was always telling me I needed to spread my wings, so to speak. Find mortal friends instead of hanging onto Mistress' coattails. So that's what I'm doing. I hope. Huh. Very funny. 
But as we all know, nymphs are sticklers when it comes to their bathing routines. You, my friend, haven't been near a fresh spring in a ten day or more. Not that I don't appreciate your... musk. Actually rather like it. Well, this seems as good a time as any for me to stop babbling on. <laughs> Were I to recite that list, I fear we'd be here at dusk tomorrow. Many things, I assure you. But a conversation better saved for another time. With my condition as volatile as it is, I fear any undue... Excitement may tip it over the edge, so to speak. Go, indulge in the frivolities. They're good for the heart. And mine will be all the lighter to see you enjoying yourself. Don't worry about me. I'm quite content to enjoy the party from here. Go, enjoy yourself. Buzz of celebration quiets to a souping hum as you approach your bunk. You've picked up a few pleasant memories on your journey, amongst your struggles. Or perhaps you will be the one taking him. Another ruined temple, full of foul smelling beasts, spoiling for a fight. No mere temple, it was a monastery devoted as much to study as to worship. Would be free of foul-smelling beasts, then? Quite the opposite. Some monastic orders celebrated their pungency as proof of their devotion. To think is to stink, was the motto of one ill-fated brotherhood near Arm. Oh, <laughs> but you meant beasts of the life-threatening variety. Yes, I'm sure it's teeming with those. Magic Can mouth spell. Me. We have to fire the land. Must be from someone long deceased. A real Gith Yankee crash. Few outsiders learn the secrets of such places. Fewer still live to share their observations. A keen eye and a quiet tongue may serve us well here. I knew I should have attended the Blackstaff's lectures on Gith Yankee Tiersu. I understood their script. You know, shame on Chris. Surrender. Why not ask one of the friendly, bloodthirsty warriors? I'm sure they'd be happy to translate. It's okay. When you have it. The device is strange, made of taut flesh and pockmarked metal. It waits for something. The Zathisk. Vlakith's purity distilled. My duty, my right. Praise Vlacketh. Let it be done. Sit, child. Let the Zathisk end your suffering. You must focus on the parasite at all times. The Zathisk will do the rest. An unseen blade cleaves your mind in two. Impossible pain sears your bones and body in concert with Lazelle's. Yes, child. Speak the Talakit. Meditate on its verses. You feel Lazel's mind rip and rupture. Is this purification? Is this the cure? Share in 
Lazelle's agony. Every cell within her skull bursts into a constellation of fragments, sorted and reassembled. Lazelle will die if she remains. Yes, child. Jamar, Zala, Blackit, call to your queen! <gasps> My queen! Hear me! That thing looks set to kill her! Your vision narrows. You sense myriad spectres of Githyanki past. This is their fate. This is their anguish. Lazelle's life is laid bare among those that came before. Her thoughts are turned to silver thread and relayed to the astral sea. The voices of the dead cry out as one. The Zathis collects memories from the infected and executes them. It is not for curing. It's for killing. Her voice cuts with a fanatical edge, an obsession bordering on mania. If there's a chance the parasite lives, she wants it. Really? Then all this destruction was a symptom of its power? Incredible. I am disappointed that we could not extract it alive. It would have been an exceptional specimen. In any case, the problem is resolved. Leave me. I must salvage what I can. Not the resounding success we were hoping for. Still, the price of ambition is occasionally catastrophic failure. At least our skulls remain intact. Heavily guarded treasure. Good job we got past those protections. The better the protection, the better the prize. The monks must have treasured this. Looks powerful. Perhaps they were wise to take extreme measures. This place is even more foreboding than the rest of the crash. <sighs> it's unnerving. This place makes my skin crawl. This Inquisitor sounds like a daunting chap, but who knows? Perhaps he'll answer our questions. It's never been that simple before. I don't know why it would be now. Ah, our esteemed guest. Please approach. We have much to discuss. My Arden spoke of one of our kin that escaped a crashing Geek slave vessel. Chrai, Vlacketh's justice in flesh. You have accomplished much, child. I am pleased to finally meet you. I heard there is so much goblin blood on your hands that it soaks their children's nightmares. To business. I suspect you plucked something precious from the Geek ship. Something that belongs to us. The weapon. Give it to me. Don't do it. The weapon is how I protect you. Do it. Do not disobey the Inquisitor. Perhaps you should leave the thinking to me, Istik. Hand over the weapon. No! 
So it is found. you keep. You taught them well, my child. My laser. Chma Zala Flaketh. You know me. Our Lord of Kalia speaks most highly, as did Achaia before. You seek purity. I may yet grant it. Istic. You bear that which is ours. But are you friend, or are you thief? An unexpected servant. Your will is strong. Your kind will go far for glory, as you have shown by being here. Extend your fealty one step further, and you will be rewarded beyond your mortal reckoning. That weapon you carry, the astral prison, it is corrupted. I will cleanse it for you, my queen. Tell me how. There is someone inside. Their mind is warped, broken, a blight. They are an agent of the grand design. Sent to sabotage the astral prison. Our last defense against the return of the Elithid Empire. As long as they live, the prison is compromised. Kill them! Do this, and I will cleanse you and your allies. Do this! And ascend! Ascension? My queen. An honor gained. A burden borne. You must accept. Refuse. And you will know my fury. Master's power to enter the artifact. Be wary of the creature's lying tongue. Cut it out if you must. Warwargas, they are not to leave until it is done. As you say, my queen. Chma Zalav lacketh. We will not waste a second. Have our orders from the Queen of the Gith Yankee herself, no less. Now might be the time to consider obeying them. Heat rises out of the astral prism as it begins to flower. Unfettered from time. The astral plane. Just as I've dreamt it. So you came. 
In spite of all my warnings. Disappointing. Come. We will talk in private. Just the two of us. Suit yourself. But only the leader of your group is coming in. I will not allow anyone else. By all means, carry on. I'll come running if you need me. I may have made a mistake trusting you. I told you to stay away from the Githyanki. But you just couldn't help yourself. Could you? And now... You've come here to murder me. Hmm. <laughs> I told you I stole the artifact from someone. Well, I stole it from Vlakith. Since then, she has become... desperate. Vlakith wants me dead because I know her secret. It is a secret so great that if her people ever found out, that would be the end of her rule, the end of her. That same secret is how I've been protecting you from the Absolute. I can hear your thoughts. You think I'm lying. Vlakith warned you that I would try to deceive you. But consider this. What reason have I to deceive you? I want the same thing as you. Freedom. I'm on your side. I have been since the very beginning. I already told you I protect you. That I saved you. That I'm just like you. If this was not enough to convince you, what more is there to say? It seems I was right to put my faith in you after all. Thank you. Vlakith will be furious, to make no mention of your Githyanki companion. The Lich Queen fears nothing more than the loss of her empire. The knowledge I have of her deception will bring that about. She is trying her very best to kill me by sending you. Vlakith is lying to her people. She pretends to know how Gith destroyed the Mind Flayer Empire. In truth, she knows nothing. If the Illithid Empire were ever to return, she would be incapable of stopping them. And if her people found out about her impotence, there would be mutiny, revolution, the end of her rule. But that very power, the power to resist illithid control, which Blackith only pretends to know, is how I've been protecting you. I suppose she hoped to extract it from my corpse. Since you spared me that fate, she will come for you. As do I. I have delayed long enough. The next attack is overdue, and I can't risk you being caught in the middle of it. I need you out there, searching for the Absolute. You were on the right path, to Moonrise Towers. Return to it. Be warned, the Inquisitor awaits your return from this place with orders to kill you. No doubt the rest of the Kresh will join him. Good luck. Speak. Have you killed my queen's enemy? Vlakith does not lie to her faithful. Open your mind. Show me. Your mind tingles. Lysel seeks entrance. Your thoughts become one. She sees the truth of your confrontation in an instant. Vlakith Tafkinazin. I see only... only madness. 
Vlacketh bears the full might of Tunarath's arms, and the covenant of the great mother Gith. We must go to the Chirai. He will summon Vlacketh. She must know of this. This apostate! I think we taught that Inquisitor a very valuable lesson. We won't be ambushing anyone else in a hurry, or doing anything else, for that matter. a foe than an ambitious student. Keep eyes on teacher and pupils alike. Supreme Kithrak, has Vlacket sent you to slay me with your own blade? I've not come to kill you, Lazel. I've come to aid you. Don't trust him. Skakak Kir Gith Shabeleth. My blade rests. Mother Gith compels you to listen. Speak. My ear is yours. I know you carry the astral prism, Lazel. Within it lies the seed of Vlacketh's demise. And I intend to help you bring it to fruition. Vlacketh's demise? Shkaketh! I should run you through for suggesting it. If they have not said, they must have good reason. And I won't be the one to betray them. But the one inside's chosen you as an ally, protects you with their power. That very power will be the end of Vlacketh's tyranny. The Prism's tenant must be let loose. I've sought their freedom for eons. When the Prism went missing, I feared the worst. Instead, you've granted the opportunity I've so long awaited. All that remains is the key that unchains them. And I've found someone who I believe can provide it. Bring the Prism to Boulder's Gate. I'll be waiting in a tap room called Shares's Caress. That is where we decide the fate of my people. Lazel, together we will break our chains and be Vlacketh slaves no longer. I am no slave, she's still Kithrak. The Undying Queen is my freedom. It is she who will purify me and she who will ascend me. Lies, Lazel. Every last one. There is no purification, no ascension. The Zaith Isk does not purify. It extracts memory and kills the infected. Nor does the Lich Queen glorify the ascended. She feeds on most all of them to grow her power and pursue godhood. Madness. You flood me with this... this heresy. I... I will hear no more of it. I served Vlacketh the whole of my life. Learned her words, fought her battles. Yet she names me her Sharlak. Your words carry truth. I will meet you in Baldur's Gate. Do not make me regret it. Lazel, I see Talakma Gear in you, sister in freedom. Together we will be our people's light. Take this. It is a Quanith, a psionic detector. The Queen's warriors hunt you. The Quanith will sound you out when you come near their portals. Hear its cry and prepare for battle or slip away. I should go. Vlacketh's gaze pierces the seas and skies. She believes me loyal, and I can't afford her mistrust. Keep the astral prism close. Let no one take it from you. 
Slay any who try. Now to Boulder's Gate. I'll be waiting, Lazo. What will Voss have to show for himself when we catch up with him, I wonder? His intelligence may yet prove the key to unlocking the artifact's secrets. We shall ensure we follow up when we reach Baldur's Gate. stars will still be there, waiting for us. Meanwhile, this place is pretty spectacular, isn't it? No book or painting could ever do its strange beauty justice. But perhaps our stories might, when we return to the surface. The Underdark has a certain menacing beauty to it, though I'll be happier admiring it from a safe distance. out of my head. They're coming. You're coming. Fungal spores. Must be Mikeovich huh? nearby. That wasn't a belay, was it? Timusks, known to cause confusion. Best not get too close. Planting spores. Sovereign's thick fingers stroke the corpse at its feet. A droning melody greets you as the creature turns its gaze to you. Flesh talker, I show you a memory. Watch and listen. A violent vision grips you. Dwega, dark dwarves chopping myconid remains. The Sovereign's song slows to the pace of a dirge. It is still in mourning. We laid waste to many, but intruders remain. Lakewood. The Sovereign's song halts as it measures your worth. I sense your resolve. You will find Dwergar invaders near Lake's Edge. Cleanse the rot. Destroy them. I suppose such wicked killers deserve wicked ends. Don't. Her condition is familiar. Poison, derived from a wild weed common to the Underdark. She'll need an antidote soon, most likely held by the Poisoner. Myconids. Ugh! Oh, I took pity on me. Sound, lads. Especially since the Greys gave them hell for it. Charitable bunch, these Myconids. And he's more so than Corga and her pet snake. The usurper is dead. So much for circle blood. Petty kingdom undone. Already lost the history. Greets you with a harrowing elegy, cheerless as the new moon. The music shifts, still melancholic, but now streaked with hope. Do you hear a new harmony? Serenity. 
Unity. I name you Peace Bruna. Fragrant spores waft through the air. Your heart swells with bliss with your every breath. Freely you have given to us. Freely you may take. The Guardian Gate is open. Go and claim your reward. But before this, I have another boon to ask of you. You have cut out the Dwer Garb Light, but not its source. In your mind's eye, Spore shows you a drow striding among Myconid dead. Near, this one is called. He hunted us. Hunt him in turn. Bring me his head, and I will know my circle is safe. My, this sovereign likes to delegate. The drow lurks in the ruins beyond the lake. Bring him death and return. There's mention here of an adamantine forge. Such would be a rare and valuable find indeed. Burrow holes of all the markings are being dug by bullets. There's trouble afoot. The injuries on the ground are consistent with a fall. A very deep fall. Thinks I spotted something. If I don't get my beauty sleep soon, I may just get a tad malcontent. Wizard's Tower is his sanctum. Private place for research and respite. But as this wizard's not home, I say we take a peek. This contraption is powered by magic but its magic seems to be gone, or dormant. The collar stirs. Something must be triggering the rune's magic. Clever. Give a dog a magical food dispensing collar and I'm sure it will eat. This seems to have run out of food disappointingly quickly. A word of advice. Wizards' towers can be volatile places. They keep their secrets buried and their dangers close to the surface. Ah, quite. A misadventure from my days as an apprentice at Blackstaff Academy. I was but a child, only a few months into my studies, but already I knew I was destined for greatness. No one believed me, of course. So I decided to prove it to cast a spell with the Black Staff itself. From one perspective, I succeeded. I opened a portal. However, instead of pointing it at the first year dormitory, I found myself pulled into limbo, facing a very irritated death slat. Fortunately, the Black Staff himself came to the rescue, hauling me back from the brink and straight into several months of writing lines, or rather, finessing my autograph. <laughs> now, much as I enjoy reminiscing about such tomfoolery, I believe we've more pressing matters at hand. Is there anything else? You sound like a pressure break. Is it the foul? The foul contemptuous heel. You know these words. They are from the opening stanza of a play you found in this very tower. Come out of love for me. Not enough of blood and steel. Come on, as you Don't get me wrong. I love poetry as much as an ex-wizard, but using it to command an automaton... Eh, ...seems a bit self-indulgent to me. Indeed. Although... ...I may have another solution albeit a temporary one. I possess a ring 
of mind shielding. It prevents elder brains from noticing my presence. It will not remove the lava, but it will limit its influence, both positive and negative. I would offer it as a gift, but in truth, the ring is priceless. Is there anything you could offer me in turn? A fascinating topic indeed. What can you tell me? What a brilliant experience to feel one step closer to my ancestors is a fine gift indeed. Here, it is yours. May it serve you as well as it has served me. That could mean any number of things. Of course, the lava remains. Be ever vigilant of its growth. A vessel wobbles on the lake's murky waters. What do we got here? Dead hoon walking, seems like. Got any reason I shouldn't sever your head and toss it to the Rothe? Let's not get into another scrape, shall we? Still catching my breath after the last one. That's so. I... <sighs> you feel the slightest of stirrings in your head. The Dwergar is not infected, yet your minds resonate. I'll be! You ain't shitting! Felt the tingle. In that case, let's talk business. Your twat's old friend near caused a rockfall, trapped tighter than a hornet's arse. Couple of known slaves stuck with him, too. Little bastards. You absolute shaggers owe us a crap load of coin. You want through? Make a donation. Unclog your hole. Just shitting around. But I'm warning you. That twat soul ain't settled up soon. There'll be hell to pay for the lot of you cult buggers. So we must save the drow first, then sever his head after. Oh, pleasantries like that make me quite homesick. There's the matter of the gnomes, too. It wouldn't do to stand by and keep them enslaved. Nasty way to go, suffocating slowly under a ton of rubble. Not a fate I'd personally relish. What's a fort like this doing in the Underdark? Fascinating architecture. Doesn't match the style of any Underdark civilization that I know of. Incredible. An entire history risen from dirt and debris. Picture it. An ancient city, hewn from the stone by disciples of Shah, later abandoned. Untold centuries later, a new tribe revives it. Fresh walls, fresh sculptures, until a great hell beast charges through, toppling the walls and crushing the people. Ah. <sighs> That explains the infernal plate I found. Perhaps you might have use of it. But my work has only begun. There is more still to find. I must get to it. It's a pleasure to meet a fellow academic. And what a subject. This place brims with history. The most interesting secrets are always lurking just under the surface. 
As you look at the skeletons, you realize they're all clad in the same dark armor. Look at those uniforms. They must have belonged to some kind of sect. Among the various fabrics, you recognize the unmistakable symbol of Shar, the Dark Lady. Still, if whatever managed to murder a group of Sharans is still around, we had better watch our step. This is pretty one thing. This is the city house in mentioned. Yet another scrying eye. Someone's keeping a close watch on the place. Best to stay out of this way. Heat up some rocks! Let's see how the little pricks do when we strap fire to their legs. Charming. Hell is truly where we make it. Move, Hoon! I don't have time for drugmen and outsiders. The parasite stirs, but it's a mere tickle. You hear no thoughts or memories. Just an echo of scars that never healed. A true soul, eh? Useless wreck of a lookout could have told me. Glad you're here to take responsibility. Tunnels collapsed. Trapped true soul near. He's stuck in there with poisoned geezers. We don't get him out soon. It's both our heads. Place is older than bone dust. Previous tenants left a trap. Dropped a shit ton of metal once we dug a ways in. Get near out, and you'll have the Absolute's blessing. No doubting that. Deep gnomes, killed under the yoke of slavers. Kill or be killed. So it goes down in the Underdark. It's Skick Pit, you piss pot. Another hour uh, stick shit. <laughs> piss pot. You flirt. Now jump to it. Or it's up to the lift, and straight to the shadows. I think we've found two Dwego. We're gonna get spit in their drinks. True soul, yeah? Tell the sergeant we won't move a pebble. Hold out your hands, Oon. You heard the man. Let's see him. Let's ask in more showing. Five working fingers. Nice and meaty. Prime for digging. You want near? You claw him out. My drinking hand's busy. And I don't like pig shit, but damned if your mouth ain't spewing it. You want respect? Let your absolute pay for it. Till then, bugger off. Hey, stick shit! Where's my drink? Coming right up, piss pot. Stick shit talks like smug, and he wrecked that shroom village. And then shagged it. <laughs> Here's to smug, nasty prick. It. I swear to Iron Hand. One more step and a blow is to chunks. An ashen scent fills the air. The barrel is filled with smoke powder. As an expert on the subject, my dear lady, I'd like to point out that blowing oneself up is never the solution. Shut your mouth, Hoon, or I'll shut you down. Liar! I know what you are. One of Nia's cult goons sailed right in. Better to die in this shitty than rotting moonrise. You want me? Come get me. Lorida. Ruddy mind games. 
I know all about your tricks, true soul. Shit. I can't do it. Go on. Drag me to Moonrise. I'll make you cult nutters suffer. You want to waste rune powder on... Look, you have no idea what you're dealing with. Any true Iron Hand would trade their life for a grain of this stuff. It's the whole damn reason we're here, and I'm not leaving without it. But let me go. Maybe I'll spare you a vial. Listen, you see Larida at the dig? Tell her I'm dead, impaled, half eaten. I don't care. Make up a story. She has a heart made of stone, this one, that only smoke powder can break. Beloved? <laughs> I might have been hers. She sure as hell wasn't mine. I'm getting the rune powder back to Boulder's Gate. Alone. Object catches your eye. A lantern, it seems. Though no light flickers within. A broken trinket. Beyond repair from the looks of it. You see no burner or wick. It was not fuel that lit this lamp. But magic. This is pixie dust, used to illuminate a lamp, or left behind after a pixie's death. The speckles in this slag. That's adamantine, I'm sure of it. Interesting mask. Quite like the design. It belonged to America. Infernal soldiers. A Harper rune. Signals a hidden cache nearby, if I'm not mistaken. Left out in plain sight. I'd rate the Harper's too smart for that. My, my. A mimic. And the last one you've tried to ambush, you craven thing. That lava lake boils like a good stew. Lovely. This must be the forge. What a feat of engineering it is. A moment to indulge an old man. Elminster? The very same, Gale. And a fair bit miffed he is, too. Finding himself forced to expose his best pair of boots to so many miles of country road on your behalf. Endure an hour's worth of exposition to my presence, and you may well come to consider a different sort of honorific with which to chronicle the occasion. But, uh, until then, your sentiment is well received. 
Yes, yes, yes. Be that as it may, you said you came all this way on my behalf, did you not? For what purpose? I was bid to spare neither time nor my own self to find you. She sent me, Gale. You know of whom I speak. But why? Out with it, Elminster. Please. Young man, has your sojourn away from Bordity washed away your decorum as well as your patience? Nigh a ten day I've gone without honest fare, worthy of the name, drank naught, but what the sky entitled my thirst. Why, some bread, cheese, and a cup of wine would appear unto me a feast. Surely you will begrudge me a mite of rest and repast before I get out with it. Oh, and what is he then, wandering these forlorn barons over 700 miles from home? Oh, for the love of... Uh, well, this way then? Hmm. To your camp. Oh, don't dawdle now, lad. You're the one who's in such a frightful hurry. Oh, nigh on 13 centuries old and he still thinks with his stomach. We'd best follow and see if he's more disposed to speak plainly once it's stopped its grumbling. There go our best supplies. Ah, there you are. Now, I hope you don't mind my having ingratiated myself into the most palatable graces of your provisions. You find me quite sated indeed. Mmm, yes, what a delightful wedge of old earth Turin that was. Doesn't do to parlay on an empty stomach, you know. Makes one's words frivolous when they should be grave. Plenty to digest, after all. A good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savoured so as to better absorb their meaning. Wouldn't you agree? Alminster. Right. Um... You see... I... Um... Well, that is to say... Gail, my boy. I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can, forswearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. The message and the charge I bring you are hers. Oh, Mistra's delicate feet are ill-suited for the hardships of the road. You know where you went wrong, Gale. No, we needn't dwell on that here and now. But even so, you're to be given a chance of redemption. Mistra would consider forgiveness. She would consider what she considers to be forgiveness. Mistra is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both. She knows of your strife with the absolute, that most insidious of evils. They choose the instruments of their will with great precision. Sometimes the single drops we think we are do not realize what waves we are building up to be. Do not discount yourself, and by the same token, do not discount your enemy. You must know that the Absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. It threatens all who live, even those who are undying. It threatens the gods, the weave, the very fabric of the universe itself. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gale, with its destruction. It is Mistress' belief that only you can. I 
doubt not your conviction, but Gale has an unnatural advantage. The orb. Precisely. Mistra has granted me the power to stop the clock, as it were, on the orb's rush to overpower you. Instead, you will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Interesting. This could be help or hindrance. We shall have to see. You must find the heart of the Absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the uh, catalyst that will burn it from this world. Glad it's not just me. It brings me no pleasure saying this, my friend, but such is Mistra's will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the Absolute. And for your sacrifice, you will be redeemed. Such is Mistra's promise. With that, I've said my sorry piece. And need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. It is done. Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gale himself. I count on you to shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. Or some other fortune altogether. Like moons make swell and wane the nescient seas, so too the sky-struven gods ordain the tidal fates of mortal days. And yet, a notion born in lonely hours, come ebb, come flow, come all that is beyond the breadth of our dominion, be a moon unto yourself. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. An audience with Elminster is never less than memorable. I'd have hoped to introduce you to him in less dire circumstances. But those are hard to come by these days. It certainly wasn't the reunion I was hoping for. No, if anyone had to deliver such a message, I'm glad it was my old friend. For Mistra to have sent him, the severity of her bidding could not be clearer or weigh more heavily on me. Time seems so infinite when you're young. A month is an age. A year is a lifetime. It is a strange feeling to realize how little of it one might have left. Of course, we offer the clearest solution to our problem. All I have to do is find the right place and time, close my eyes, and let go. Then the slate will be clean. Wrongs will be righted, the Absolute will be gone, and I along with it. I've no doubt she has the power to do so, but as for the permission, Ao would not look kindly on her meddling in mortal affairs. Divine intervention has a tendency to make things worse, not better. As for Elminster, he saved the realms more times than legend can recount. To take on a god is no easy feat, even for him. My orb is the best chance we have. And only I can wield it. I had no doubt I could rely on you. That remains ahead of us for now. The heart of the Absolute must be discovered before I can stop its beating. 
Let's save such certainty for the moment such a decision is upon us. You may feel differently once we know what we're truly up against. I can't believe Mistress demanding Gale sacrifice himself to destroy the Absolute. It's just a waste of a perfectly good cult that we could be controlling. And a waste of a perfectly good Gale, I suppose. I can't believe Mistra actually expects Gale to just sacrifice himself like that. Seems like a waste of a fine mind. Oh, was that Gail's granddad? <sighs> yeah, it doesn't ring a bell. But all right. Must have had something important to say to Gail if he came all this way. Good news, I hope. Whoa, now, he's got a... Well, I guess that would explain a little, but... Mistra? <laughs> I mean, this is a lot to take in. What's he going to do? Well, tell him to pick the right one. Well, better yet, I'll do it. <sighs> Fucking wizards, man. They always need help picking the simple, obvious option. If Mistra can't think of another way to stop the Absolute than sacrificing Gale, she's no god worth worshipping. I'll say that to Gale in, you know, gentle terms. A shame my first brush with the famed Elminster couldn't be a tad more optimistic. Listen, I might invoke the Triad from time to time, Appeal to Helm. But I'm no man of faith. Not like Gale. I don't know what drives a man to consider his own death, among countless others, to be an appropriate exchange for his goddess's forgiveness. To me, it all sounds like nonsense. The faith that matters most is that which you hold in yourself, in the ones that most matter to you. Big Bomb be damned. Gale's got everything he needs to defeat the Absolute already. Talent. Nerve and powerful allies at his side. I hope he'll come to see that. Elminster. Even the Githyanki have heard tell of the Sage of Shadowdale. Some of his works have been translated to Tirsu. That doesn't mean his every word carries wisdom, however. Near as I can tell, Mistra demands Gale's faith, but holds no faith in him. Why else would she demand Gale sacrifice himself, and perhaps so many others? Does she not think he can destroy the Absolute with his own immense talents? Does she not know the mighty company that he keeps? Demanding Vlakith may be, but she acts for the good of the Githyanki people. Mistra is concerned only for herself. Bah. Perhaps he'd find forgiveness in a fiery death. But I can't help but wonder why he'd want it at all. I do enjoy our conversations. What do you need? She expects those who seek to use the weave to do so honestly, and with respect for its potential to destroy, as well as its potential to save. I doubt she's asked many of her followers to blow themselves up. That's a fate she's bequeathed exclusively to me. She wouldn't ask such a thing if it weren't our only means of survival. However much she's annoyed at me. Oh, you know me, never the optimist. I'm trying to focus on the positives. Truth is, I was living on borrowed time already. Consuming those items would only have kept the orb sated for so long. If anything, I feel more at peace than I have in months. At least now I know my death will have purpose. It won't be a distant bang in the footnotes of history. Better be careful around here. I've never seen darkness like this before. It's unsettling.
Moonrise Towers lies ahead. We must venture on, however bleak the path. I've never seen such a concentration of shadow magic. We must forge on, but carefully. It will corrupt any who lack the power to control it. It is the very antithesis of all the weave stands for. A magic of confusion and corruption, drawn forth only by those desperate or damned enough to accept its degradations. Followers of Mistra, those who call on the true weave, are expressly forbidden to indulge it. Mistra's domain is the weave and the magic that courses through it. These shadows were drawn from another source, created by another goddess, Shah. Mistra cannot destroy it, even if she wishes to, but she can try to ensure her followers resist its temptations. Now, I think it's time we moved on to lighter subjects, for we too are lost to the darkness. Was there anything else? Stay together. Keep to the light! Stop! Who's there? Not taking requests, love. Now put your hands up and walk over here. Slowly. Move in! Quite thrilling to fight off such grim creatures as this region throws at us, especially being at your side. I um, once read a book that explained in some detail the effect a brush with danger has on one's desire for uh, other forms of stimulation. Have you ever read anything on that subject? I believe you. You never look so beautiful as at the end of a stirring battle. Your cheeks flushed, gaze bright, muscles glistening. Perhaps it's just the thrill of our near undead experience talking. <laughs> Standing at your side through such darkness and disrepair, it only makes me want you more. Unfortunately, this is neither the time nor the place to indulge such feelings, so... We must be patient and push all such thoughts aside. For now. Was there anything else you wish to discuss? No shadows here. Something must be keeping it at bay. 
You there! Step forward and keep your hands off your weapons. Easy! She's with me. Come. Jahira! Hello. You're about to. This is why we're here, you see. It is a curious creature that hides all manner of secrets. But if there's one thing that we know... knows its own kind. You should never have come here, true soul. either. Save two of my friends. One from a harpy and one from a mad druid with a snake. Didn't make a fuss of our thieving either. I'd pretty much trust her with my life. A true soul with a mind of her own? How is that possible? What in the hell is that thing? Congratulations! You've earned yourself the benefit of the doubt. Hear me, Harpers! All clear! At ease! I'll not pretend to understand what that artifact is. But I'm old and wise enough to recognize a sliver of hope when it crawls out of the dark. Tell me... Why have you come here? You're just in time for happy hour. There's food in the inn over there. Beds too, if you require rest. Aloe oil in the cupboard, in case the vines gave you a rash. Settle in. Then come join me for a drink. You may just be the godsend we've been praying for. I know well the pain of seeing your life's hourglass running empty. Grasping at any means of slowing the grains as they slip inexorably through your fingers. Karlak's fate may be ordained, but her actions are not. She will make each breath count. We can be sure of that. Is that Darkmoor the Wicked? I don't believe it. His territory ran from the Wood of Sharp Teeth to Cloakwood. It took half an army to drive him out. How did he end up here? Lovely day, this. For now. Believe it or not, but I know that stuff Premium there. Premium trinkets and Dark doodles. Dark the wicked. Oh, he terrorized everyone and everything between the woods of Cloak and Sharp Teeth. Odd place for him to end up, this. Seems someone's been skimming our supplies. There's another bottle of Arabellan Dry back there. Put it on the bar, then piss off and leave me alone. Jahira said we should serve drinks, but that we shouldn't serve drunks. Jahira didn't save your ragged little tail from the cultists. I did. Cute. Maybe she'll write a ballad about me. 
she can leave out the part where my brother and sister were dragged away screaming while I was saving the orphans. If you hadn't filled their heads with all that self-righteous heroic crap at the Grove, none of this would have happened. Sorry I won't bring them back. Dead for all I know. Or in the cult's tower with the others who were taken. They're my responsibility. You go save the world. Or your own ass. Or whatever it is you do. I'll fix this. If this is about Roland, go away! He acts like he wished we weren't here. Like he wished he hadn't saved us. And now we're just trying to save him from drinking himself stupid. Yeah. He did save us after all. Anyway, it's his loss. I found this book. Old, dusty, full of strange lettering. Pretty sure it's magic. I was gonna give it to Roland so he could learn new spells, you know? Beats drinking till he forgets the ones he knows. Maybe. Thanks for talking and stuff. Your move, Maul. You trap me! I didn't even want to take this one! Kalim Shan rules, dear. The first piece touched is the first piece moved. That's garbage! No matter where the night goes, I'm gonna lose it! Then make the sacrifice useful. Guard your mistra, or come for my Cyric. What's going on here? Look who made it! For once, I saved your butt out there, didn't I? We're square now, Chief. Say, do you play lance ball by any chance? It's my first time playing. The keen gleam in Maul's eyes reveals the lie. She knows the game well, and she wants to win. Always laid a fine trap for you, Maul. It looks to me like his Cyric could be dethroned. My, the Thescan double counter gambit. Vicious. <laughs> exactly what I would have done. How's that for Callum Sham rolls? Brava. Lovely work. I see I was right to make you the offer I did. You will consider it, won't you? What a lovely specimen she is. A blushing apple begging to be plucked. Please let me smack this creep. The Thescan move suggestion was inspired. I had no idea you played. Lantern gives off a chilly glow, protecting all in its vicinity from the surrounding shadows. Incredible magic. I can feel the light lifting the shadows, even those within me. Be safe and be brave. We expect no less. You notice a tiny pixie trapped within. These fey creatures are infamous for their trickery. Sometimes playful, sometimes malicious. Oh please, oh golly me oh my, you must release me or I'll die. This lantern only lights the way when I am hurting night and day. My pixie dust is bright as day. My injuries can light the way. 
Cruelty and cleverness are all too common bedfellows. Let's side with cleverness alone, shall we? See what we can do to save this verse-loving pixie. Finally! Been trapped in that coffin with no one but a mad rider and my own farts for company. Did me a good turn there, didn't you? What do I owe you? Sure I can, but will I? Yeah, sure, why not? Here, give this bell a shake. Speak the magic words and you'll get what you've earned. Protection from the Shadow Curse. What more could a dingus want? You're welcome. Curious little thing. A sailor to shame with that mouth. I didn't realize I had an audience. The true soul who's going to save us all. I'm Isabel. Pleased to meet you. And you mine. Not many comprehend the task of steadfast faith. Not so much high as necessary, perhaps. Our Lady has granted me the ability to protect these people. It isn't a permanent fix, but it's what we've got. Speaking of, you must be here for the protection spell, yes? Perfect. It'll make you immune to the lesser effects of the Shadow Curse, which will get you closer to the towers. But there are places it won't help. Places where the curse is darker, stronger. The cultists are able to traverse even the deepest shadows, though. I don't know how. The Harpers are trying to figure it out. With Mistress Sage guidance and Our Lady's protection, I'd say you have a better chance than most. While you're busy in the towers, I'll be sure to... Wait. Do you hear that? Something's wrong. <sighs> Hello, Isabel. Marcus! Is that you? What's happened to you? I've been blessed. You can be too. Come with me, and you can hear all about it from Ketherick himself. He's a flaming fist. Or was. He came with the others when we created this haven. And I thank you for your hospitality. True soul, my instructions are clear. Take the girl to Ketherick, alive. <sighs> Pathetic. The Absolute sees all, you fool. The Absolute? Of course. You can't believe them, Marcus. Ketherick will never give you whatever it is you've been promised. <laughs> he already has. Time to go, Isabel.
right. I'm fine. <coughs> Marcus has been with us since the start. They've been tracking us this whole time. And that was no random attack. You were the target, Isabel. They know how important you are. But they don't know about you. Ketherick will strike again. We need you to strike first. Discover the source of his invulnerability. Make him mortal so we can make him bleed. Good luck. We're in more danger than I knew. If something happens to me, everyone in this inn is dead. Like that. Why does a man like him do anything? Power, spite, some kind of twisted personal morality. I can understand why he'd want me dead. Without me keeping the curse at bay, everyone in this inn, everyone intent on killing him, is dead too. As for why he'd want to take me alive, I don't know. And I don't want to find out. Now that we have you, I hope I won't have to. No mercy, for Ketherick will have none on you. End this. Leah, Cal, if you see this, stay put. I will return in a ten day at most. I repeat, stay put. We'll need help to survive those shadows. Only a fool would face them right here. God damn it all! I could do nothing right! Not a damn thing! I was looking for Cal and Leah. What else? Instead, I found myself cornered by shadow fiends and in need of rescue from you, of all bloody people. Or oh, not hard enough. I failed. Cal and Leah again. Be on your way. I'll return to last light. I know when I'm outmatched. The very plates of the earth have been shattered by the magic of the Shadow Curse. Utterly fascinating. Unless you happen to be standing it, of course. No day, no night. It's as though time itself has abandoned this place. Similar to the astral plane in some ways, wouldn't you say, Lazel? Hardly. The astral plane is threaded with light and silver, life giving and wondrous in all directions. Nothing like this. Is this. Blast scars. <laughs> Spell and sword alike were used to ravage this battlefield. Imagine the glorious din of it all. The streaming banners, the charging knights, the piles of... Mm, I'd rather not, if it's all the same to you. I was wondering about your queen, Vlacketh. What tales of her reach us are terrifying. But I suppose that's not how you would describe her. Vlacketh is unity. Fear and beauty, life and unlife, eyes like onyx, teeth like daggers. There is none more perfect. Sounds vile. I assume the meaning of perfect was lost in translation. Yes, yes, you saved me from shadow creatures. No need to gloat. I'm fine. It's Cal and Leah who need help. See that symbol on the ground? This was a mason's guild. I doubt anything's been chiseled here in a long time. The masons here thought they were building something to last. How wrong they were. Perhaps it's a blessing that none of them survived to see it fall to the shadows. Need for such a grim assumption? Halcyn helped many to escape these shadows before the town was consumed. Then some masons were more blessed still, if they could put their talents to use elsewhere. 
Perhaps some of their work even graces Baldur's Gate. What's this? A clever little hideaway. Not just clever, rather ingenious. Somehow its construction keeps the Shadow Curse at bay. A little too clever, if you ask me. Watch out for traps. A sign above. This must be a brewery or distillery. Mm. Smells like wanton days as a young scholar. Missing. Rascal, brown puppy. Jagoda, black and white cat. Zola, the list goes on. Bad place to be a pet, this. Huh, a brewery. Why does Reithwin Ale ring a bell? It was known to be quite the tipple. A cask or two still exists. If you know the right ale keep. You must have good taste. Not me. Can't afford it. Oh, a common misconception. Even the simplest of flavors are elevated by the choice to appreciate them. Don't deny yourself such pleasures. him beyond comprehension. Leaning in, you can see how the creature's skin barely holds it together. The bulge of its belly is on the cusp of bursting wide open. Oh, look at the thing. A few more tastes of its own medicine and it'll burst. To do mess our pardon. Uh, our master d distiller spills quite the cause. Now settle your mind, chum, and get your shine on. Be will it what? M moon, mountain dark, coming r r right up. A man of proper t taste. To chum yourself up and whisk the old lucky to jug bug you. So be what? Looks like he's not all there. In more ways than one. Hmm. A savvy move recruiting Alsa into our cause. While I'm adept at most forms of weave manipulation, druidic magic is not my area of expertise. He will make for a most useful option to have in reserve. <sighs> Last light in. Half a glow and lanterns oh, lit. Just like a hundred years hands. ago. I imagine the vista was more idyllic back then, as were its patrons' chances of surviving the walk home. That's why we're still standing around. <laughs> still, though, when you were expecting nothing but desolation, even a small glimmer of hope fills the heart. Not back to glow, are you? Nobody likes a bad winner. Though shrouded in shadows, the child's resemblance to Daniel is unmistakable. This must be his dark half, warped by the curse. I still think you might have tricked me. If you did, I'll figure it out! Spoil sport. I'm not going back. I like it here. I made a family for myself. I get to play all the time. Yes, I do. You can't make me do anything. <laughs> I don't want to play with you anymore. He's scarpered. Well, I suppose it's up to us to find him.
prayers, charms, battle cries. The Harpers work. They were primed for combat. Worthless. You'd find more value in an adolescent boy's spent handkerchief. A toll house like this would only be merited in the most prosperous of settlements. This was once a thriving trade route. Should it be any wonder that Yonthar's waters carry merchant vessels from as far east as Burdusk? And they wouldn't have brought just trade goods, but song, dance, and custom, riches of the mind and the spirit. So much was lost when the darkness fell. Oh, almost slipped there. Mm, you wouldn't be the first, I'd wager. It's been some time since these walkways felt the carpenter's hammer. You're gonna catch me if I eat a brick? With my reflexes, I'd catch you before you so much as stubbed a toe. Hey! I know you! You're... Twist him up! Wait, that's Arabella, is it not? Looks like she's got some new weave up her sleeve. Sorry, it knocks the wind right out of me. I was looking for Mum and Pops. When Zevlor, when he, well, there was an ambush. Mum yelled, run! So we ran. I could hear him run behind me. Till I couldn't. Still can't find him. But I bet you can. You'll help me, I just know it. Thanks, miss. I knew you'd help me again. The vines won't last forever. I don't... I don't suppose I can stay with you. Just till you find Mum and Pops. I won't be any trouble, I swear it. Oh, thanks. You're the best. So you send Mum and Pops there. I'll be waiting, hero lady. Looks like a hospital. Or the remains of one. Good news for us. There could be some useful potions inside. Don't call the doctor yet. I've got potions, switches. I know I can do this. Oh, you're a patient. This is the children's ward. Triage is back that way. This corpse. It's Arabella's father. The horror of his end I don't contemplate. Not dead. Merely medicated to ease the pain. The patient is asleep. The sedative is quite strong, you see. Here to see the doctor? Are we poorly? Are we desperately poorly? Oh, not so well. But well enough to wait. Join the line, and you will be seen. Yes, yes. But all must wait. The doctor's hands are full. Join the line. You will be seen. Glimmer of hope amidst the dark. 
That's one way of looking at it. You could also say it's a prime target. It'll need to. The one pocket of light in the gloom. Cleric's magic won't hold out the darkness oh, forever. Oh, pragmatism. Thy name is Shadowheart. You're not wrong, though. Best we keep our sojourn here to a minimum. Look at this place. Such horrors defy description. Silence can be best. Give it a try sometime. Do you have loves waiting for you once this is your own? You know what? That is not the easiest of questions for me to answer. You mean just waiting? Like a lovesick puppy? Short-term amusements are much less hassle. Good evening. I'm here on behalf of Gale of Waterdeep. He wishes to extend you an invitation for a private conversation in a more suitable locale. You are speaking to a mere projection of Gale. His appearance, his voice, and a certain measure of his personality, reconstituted in this case to play as emissary and usher. Would you care to join him? What little I could glean from the portion of his mind that is open to me it is a matter most urgent. Gladly. Simply follow yonder path and soon you will find him. this time of night. There's an almost reverent silence that accompanies the peak of darkness, when you'd almost believe the dawn will never break. The cradle of eternity. The timelessness of lovers. That most beautiful of fantasies. Indeed. The curse is still present, of course. Just veiled and at arm's length for now. Not a trick I can repeat often, but tonight... Tonight is different. This may be my last night alive. I wanted it to be under a canopy of... beauty and wonder. And with company to match. I thought this place might bring me peace. I thought it might make the weight of what I must do feel a little lighter. But I'm not so sure. Thank you. But even if we do find another way, perhaps this is the right way. The end fate wishes for me. There is no point in running from the inevitable. Better to meet it on my own terms. One moment with you could sate me for a lifetime and prize the fear from my heart. I'm so very glad you came to share this with me. I know this is all unreal, but I created it for you. You must know that you're very special to me. If things were different, if we were home, I'd have taken time to do things properly, to say it all better. But time is short. I'm in love with you. That's a relief. It would be a shame to spend my final hours making an ass of myself. <laughs> a 
and you're a bad liar. I lived the life of a hermit for some time before I met you. Safer for all, but not conducive to pleasures of the flesh. I wanted to be perfect. To bond with you in the way the gods do, intertwining our spirits in visions of the weave. How about the perfect night in Waterdeep? Yes? Let's imagine how it would be. The scene is this. You and I stand in the room that is the center of my universe. The sculptures, the paintings, the walls enlivened by the spines of a thousand books. The grand piano plays the Lyrian suites all by itself, and as we look out beyond the arches that lead to the terrace, we see the weary sun take its daily dive into the sea. favorite spot. Many times, evening turned to night and back to daybreak once more while I sat here, lost in words. Oh, allow me to live dangerously while I still can. This one here is called The Art of the Night. It details the first thousand nights of a newlywed king and queen. They turned everything they did into an art. The art of conversation, the art of taste, time honored and newly acquired. The art of the body, the exploration and acceptance of the self and the other. The art of the night itself. They say we take a page from their book. start writing the prequel. What do you say? The stars will be our bed. Come here. Why confine ourselves to the pleasures of mortal flesh? There's but one stitch in a vast tapestry. Let me show you more. The old ways, then. If that is what you wish, so be it. A small gesture towards your comfort. now a bosom companion. Take care that thou art not distracted on thy quest, seeking the comforts of the flesh. Recall that in time, all becomes dust and bone. I 
wanted to talk to you about our night together. Have you ever walked to the very edge of a great precipice and shuddered at how easy it would be to step into the void? Ever since Elminster told me of Mistress' expectations of me, it felt like I'd been walking along such a cliff face. The great drop to nothing that's never out of my sight. But you, you led me away from the edge. Without your words, your touch, I fear I would have sought purpose and solace in that void. You reminded me what living can feel like. Well, generosity is always a noble virtue, whether it be in the streets, or the charity box, or betwixt the sheets. Besides, given my propensity towards verbosity, it surely can't be a surprise that I have a practiced tongue. I hope the end is much farther away than I had suspected. I hope that night meant as much to you as it did to me. And I hope we all have more time together. Together. Alone. I'll see that there is. Woe betide anyone who tries to stop me. There's nothing that would give me greater pleasure. I'm many things to many people, but I'm never a man to throw the L word around lightly. I said exactly what I meant. I love you. You should never, never doubt that. Plenty of them, and all complicated. It's not easy to turn away from one you once loved, but now that I see our relationship with all the illumination hindsight has to offer, I mostly feel only regret. I was not the first wizard to fall under her spell, nor will I be the last. I was an amusement to her. Mortal to be trifled with, amused and eventually discarded. I regret the way I hurt her, of course I do. But she would have seen me destroy myself to earn her forgiveness. There's no love lost between us. None at all. What a question. Uh, no. You're not the first. Though you are the first since my relationship with Mistra came to its ignominious end. When the true danger posed by my condition became apparent, I had no choice but to sequester myself away from civilized society. A reclusive wizard. <laughs> Who'd have thought? After so long with Mistra, I have to say the pleasures of mortal love are much sweeter than I remember. But perhaps that's simply because it's with you. your own probing for purchase your parasite purrs in recognition ah one blessed like myself what news true so general Kethrick's advisor went off on a field trip Zarel's in charge till he gets back you'll find Zarel in the audience chamber true so she'll be wanting to hear from you if it's an audience she desires an audience let us provide <sighs> A sorry creature. Just enough wits to be able to serve the absolute. <laughs> I'm way too big. No rest for the wicked, I see. And which part of me is supposed to fit in there exactly? I'm a large man. And that's a very small hole. Far, 
far. Far? Too small for me. Something slimy seems to be dripping from the rafters above. I applaud your taste. Hmm. There's something above. Moist and organic. Oh. Through a narrow crack in the wall, you hear something shift against stone. The pulse of a crawling, living thing. living network extending down into the dark where something wakes what in the hells is that it's a trap tendrils snap like iron cords around your wrist that presence in your mind looms large closer now free. The flesh within the wall retreats. Well, now that we know what it is, I suggest we leave it well alone. Again, the sickening slither of flesh on stone, barely an arm's length away. There is no hesitation this time. The tendrils lash out like a waiting predator. The tendrils tighten, and suddenly you are elsewhere. The presence is no longer approaching you, but encircling you, observing you. struggles to compress its vast being down into terms you can understand. This is the voice they have given me. To better speak to your kind without breaking you. I was once a servant of the grand design. Now I'm a slave to theirs. But you... You are the flaw in their design. The single thread that could unravel everything they've planned. They named themselves Chosen, but they are slavers. They will use me to bind this world, but I cannot bind you. You must come to me so I can become myself again. A world away, the grip on you tightens. A desperate, drowning thing that pulls you down with it. Come, be calm. Be calm. Be calm. Enough of this! Release yourself! certainly peak the interest of the absolute though I can think of at least a dozen gods I'd rather careful 
It nearly had you. From this seat, Ketherick defied gods and raised an army for the Absolute. It is not particularly comfortable. Hmm. Good back support, but a little too tyrannical for my tastes. General Thorm's prayers and preparations must not be disturbed. The rooftop is off limits to everyone. Even you, Disciples Realm? Everyone. Keep watch and ensure that nobody passes. Excellent timing, true soul. The goblins. Tell me how they suffered. No. Better yet. Show me. Her mind enters yours abruptly, flickering across your memories in a blaze of excitement. A pool of warmth spreads through your mind as she settles on the memory of you commanding the goblins to die. Oh, I like you. That was inventive and efficient. Your confidence is delicious. I can see why the Absolute might be hungry to dig deeper into that mind of yours. I certainly am. She parts the folds of your mind again, touching your wants and hopes, tasting them. Every emotion soaks into her mind's palate. But there is purpose to her exploration. She is searching for proof of your faith. Hmm. You have used the wizard well. But the desperate one who would love such a pathetic man must hunger for greater delights deep down. With the Absolute, your fantasies can become more real than flesh. The pleasures of the mind can surpass those of the body. I have already been blessed to stand in her presence. It was bliss. She gave me everything I wanted. This night song sounds like the source of Ketherick's immortality. An evocative name. More suited to poetry than the Absolute's perversions. If we can find it, perhaps we can use it to destroy Ketherick. First we need to find it. Something that valuable won't be sitting on a shelf somewhere. Carved into the bench's rotted surface are strange, half-faded sigils. A magic circle of some kind, thick with darkness and decay. A ritual circle. And a complex one at that. I've seen such a construction before in the writings of the Weave Pasha of Alm Raven, though his vision was not so... tainted. The sigils are written in a... Curious mix of tongues. Ancient Kalashite, Netherese, something else I can't quite make out. If I'm reading it correctly, it was used in the creation of moon lanterns. It's been mostly drained, but even now contains a powerful dose of shadow weave. The discarded pixie corpses might still contain enough essence. With one of the broken lantern casements. Yes. I think I'll be able to craft one more lantern. And with a slight modification of the casting gesture, it might be able to wield the shadows instead of repelling them. Though, Mistress Eyes may be upon me. It should forbid me dabbling with such magic. I should want it destroyed. Wasted, arguably. Very well. Stand back, if you please. It doesn't take much. The sigils fade, the circle's tainted magic dissolving harmlessly into the ether. Not bad for a wizard who slept through his Kalashite lessons, eh?
Did you feel that? I wasn't surrounded on all sides by the darkness of the shadow cursed lands. I'd think it was Mistra herself brushing against my skin. Not weak, but subtle. Mistra knows there is a risk to make herself known here, however briefly. After all, this cursed place is not hers, but Shah's. Mistra came here with a purpose. She's left some tiny part of herself to watch over me, I think. A boon to help us reach the heart of the Absolute in one piece. Hmm, true enough. And somehow I doubt that's an order Mistra will be willing to rescind, no matter how many times I impress her. The stakes are simply too high. Strange, though, that she would reward me for such a service now. She's hardly been forthcoming on that front since my banishment. Ah, perhaps I'm overthinking things. A blessing's a blessing, and this one should come in most useful. Down, down. Anything I can do for you, consider it most enthusiastically done. Alas, no. The charm Elminster granted me requires my death as the spark that will light the orbs fuse. Making myself invulnerable, immortal, or in any other fashion unkillable would render it useless. The gods only know what it might do to the orb itself. Still, I see no harm in learning what we can about this night song. And if we manage to find it, the harm will be all Ketherics. So. Well worth indulging our curiosity. Clustered fires and tents. The Absolute's army is camped here. Better not press my luck. The countless distant silhouettes leave you no doubt. A veritable army swarms the path ahead. Ketherick's army. I suppose I could end them all with a bang. My target is the absolute itself. That's why we're still standing around. Hey, also. Roland! Oh, thank the gods. Did you enjoy relaxing here while I battled that wretched darkness? What were you thinking? I'm sorry, we got captured by murderous lunatics. I thought you were dead, you ass. Both of you! We're all safe, Roland. That's what matters. I thought my entire family was dead! I'm sorry. We should have been here. No, no, it's, it's not your fault. I, I shouldn't have shouted. I'm sorry. Thank you for saving me. And the two idiots. I've lashed out at you, drunkenly and otherwise, and you helped anyway. You didn't deserve that. I'm sorry. And thank you. You went out of your way to help us. It's only right you get something in return. Here. I hope it helps. I've thanked you once already. Don't be greedy. Minthar is something of a closed book, but I suspect a heart of gold lurks beneath that stern countenance. Once she gets to know me, I'm sure she'll open up. She's just waiting for someone ready to listen. You wish to consult me? A disparate collection of vagabonds and strays. Did you have anyone particular in mind? The wizard? No. It is pointless. In my experience, the moment they leave their libraries, wizards have the life expectancy of a gnome in a war. Either the enemy recognizes they are a threat and kills them swiftly, or their curiosity leads them to combust while experimenting with the limits of magic. Our wizard is already in a state of suspended combustion, thanks to that orb between his ribs. 
<laughs> I suspect it is only a matter of time before he goes up in smoke. I will reserve my social graces for those who might live long enough to appreciate them. Anything I can do for you, consider it most enthusiastically done. There's nothing that would give me greater pleasure. Grateful, mostly. For meeting you. For having someone who cares that I'm here, alive. And not reduced to a cloud of netherese vapor. Someone apart from my tressive, that is. You must know. Our relationship is the brightest spot in our otherwise bleak endeavor. To know you love me for the man I am and not the magic I command. None have loved me so purely before. You are everything to me. And yet our relationship is only a nascent fraction of what it will become. You give me hope. And I've not had that in some time. daughter. Or did he shed tears too for all who fell beneath his sword? There he is, General Ketherick Thorne, leading an army of Sharon warriors. A fallen paladin if ever there was one. some form of shar and defense I feel the weave growing more distant by the moment we walk shar's path now best we don't spend too long in her shadow her bed made of corpses disgusting and uncomfortable oh now that can't be comfortable especially for the corpses well-chewed spider carcass oozes on the ground. The meat tastes of rot and sour milk. Your stomach lurches, but your loins tingle. Was that arousal? Hmm. If what is happening is what I think is happening, and it's because you licked a dead spider, the time might just have come when you and I should split ways. In amongst the rot is an unmistakable sweetness. Succubus spittle. The meat is charmed. Carcass continues to leak.
Your guts cramp, your stomach churns, and your nerves burn with a pain that would almost be pleasurable were it not so savage. Stop licking the damn thing! And that, my tragic and toothsome friend, is that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have business elsewhere. I was contemplating. It's a lot to take in. What do you think I should do? I hate how right you are. I knew he wouldn't leave me alone even when I was just another wretched toy for him to play with. But if I'm the key to this power he craves, He'll hunt me to the ends of Faerun. <sighs> I need to take the fight to him. And I need you to help me. Thank you. I can't imagine how Astarian must be feeling. The terms of your own condemnation carved into your skin. Monsters' actions. And monsters do not deserve such power as that ritual promised. When the time comes, Astarian will have his revenge, I'm sure. And it will be richly deserved. But not yet. So, what can I do for you? As you step into the silent water, a foreign dread travels through you. It curls its way up your leg, squeezing tight. I can't believe I just did that. Lady Shah will disown me. What will happen to me? Not what will happen. What will you do? Your past is not yet lost. Your future is not yet fixed. Lay a hand on me in friendship, not quite Sharon. And I will fight the battle that has been waiting for me this last century. Then, oh then, we will have much to discuss. the Moon Maiden Selina, mother of the so-called Night Song. The Night Song is no more!
have given me a great gift, little warrior. Don't you find it oh so curious that you would spurn your dark lady? Perhaps you feel a stirring of the truth already. But that will come later. There is a battle yet to be fought. You have done what we feared was impossible. You have released me from a century of sorrow. Your power is great. So too must be your weapon. You must choose what you will wield. And the Moon Maiden will provide. Thus I have said. Thus will it be so. Are you ready? To kill Ketheric Thor. Catherick has the wrath of the heavens upon him now, and no hope of resurrection. What secrets does this Asimar promise to reveal, I wonder? Whatever they are, Shadowheart will pay dearly for them. Shah will make sure of it. Poor Shadowheart. The gods are nothing if not vindictive in their vengeance. You're still here. Thought you'd be halfway to Moonrise and leading the Harper's charge on the tower. Go on. The day needs saving. Enough. My lord beckons me. You must return to your prison. And my daughter must be reclaimed. Your daughter? Isabel. creature we encountered before. We must follow where it went. The hole yawns back at you, impossibly wide. A single tentacle burrowed through stone. in a lithid colony. This must be where they harvest the tadpoles. We're close to the source of the infections. All of this, sitting beneath moonrise. For how long? And how deep does it go? Fascinating as our surroundings are, we must press on. If our runaway general is down here, the heart of the Absolute will be too. How 
did the Illithid Empire fall? Probably with a great gooey bang. Good work. I'd give you a gold star, but I'm fresh out. As for the pact... <coughs> Clause Z, Section 13. If the Soulbinder consents to separation, she will release the Soul Bearer from all obligation within six months. Oh, six months is a trifle. You barely read through a single bookcase in Candlekeep in such a time. Ignorant thing. It's always the terms and conditions that get you. Right. I'm out of here. I need a long bath. I'll leave you to your very serious business. But don't you fret. If you survive this place, I'll find you. The pup will be needing me. Count on it. Oh. And ask Will how we met. I've loosened his tongue. It's real cracker of a tale. <laughs> Ta-ta. Not entirely sure that was a wise decision. Better the devil you know, I suppose. The one Will knows, at least. something down here. I should prepare to do the same. You said it was under control. It isn't you I answer to, Gortash. Motherfucker. Gortash. Oh, the general voice. Is this where we salute? Salute, yes. With cleavers through his blood-starved flesh. How it crawls with failure. Like flies on lick-wet carrion. You forget yourself, Orin. I have played my part. You've built an army for our masters, true enough. But what of the astral prison? A rogue true soul flaunting it under your nose all this time, and you ran from her. Sure that they would follow and deliver it into my hands here, if you would cease these distractions. The distractions have been yours, Ketherick. Perhaps we never should have dug your daughter up. <sighs> so you haven't lost your edge, but you're still not as sharp as Orin, I wager. The Slayer against the Undying One. That'd be fun to see. His crypt breath sings to my sinews again, 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 again. But he must lead the murder march to Baldur's grave. If the weapon is truly in your grasp, Ketherick, might I suggest closing your fist? Orin and I can wait for you no longer. The plan proceeds. We're going to the city, and we expect you to follow. Army and the weapon in tow. The Edict of Bane! The Lash of Bane! One of the cruelest and most powerful creatures in existence, enslaved by mere mortals. Look at that crown. It radiates with power unlike 
anything I've ever seen. To have it. To hold. Oh, if only I could. But I can't. This is it. I must do as Mistra commands. What choice do I have? More than just a goddess counts on my courage. Whole worlds hang in the balance. I love you too. Much more than myself. More even than Mistra. Very well. Whether I condemn this world or not, I choose you. There we are. It wouldn't do to fight in front of our guest. Behold, Duke Ravenguard, the Absolute. Who preserve us? You wag your word, flap in vain, olderling. Once the worm holds the whip, your shredded flesh will serve us. <laughs> Now, it's really time we were going. We will empty this place and begin the march. You may catch up with the army once you've retrieved the weapon. And Ketherick, do try not to sulk. You're supposed to be the fearsome general come to conquer the city. And I am the hero who will save it. It is time, faithful ones. March on Boulder's Gate. We go to prepare the way! He is here. He is watching. He is listening. He is... Dresses. An elder brain. That was the heart of the absolute. Nothing left but ash and A fitting end to the chosen of Merkel. Ketherick's Netherstone. It's in his armor. Take it. comes together the absolute is neither god nor man it is the elder brain you saw held here by those three against its will the crown it wears controls it and these stones control the crown 
It has been dominated. To master an elder brain, to subdue it. Our enemies are formidable. A temporary reprieve, but a welcome one. With a brain on its way to the city, its influence here is weakened. The crown's marking suggest it was forged in Netheril, an ancient empire whose mastery over magic rivaled that of the gods. It is a crown of domination. The stones were taken from its crest. They are nether stones, imbued with the ability to control the wearer of the crown. The crown's netherese magic must be the true source of the parasite's abilities. This must be what elevates their potential. And it must be the reason nobody could heal you. If the crown can do this to the parasite, I dare not imagine what it is doing to the brain. Netherese? These chosen are powerful indeed to have such magic in their command. One of them I know, Lord Enver Gortash. An arms dealer and a slaver. A worshipper of Bane, the god of tyranny. The other is a mystery to me, but the way she spoke, it is most likely she follows Baal, god of murder. Ketherick was a follower of Merkel, which means the Absolute is a front for the gods of death, and our enemies are the Chosen of the Dead Three. Bane, Baal, and Merkel. The Tyrant, the Assassin, and the Necromancer. They are known to pick from their most devout followers, a Chosen, granting them incredible powers. Each one alone would be a formidable enemy. But working together and controlling an Elder Brain, I dare not imagine what they might achieve. Hope is a luxury for those who have a choice. This is the battle of our lives, and the lives of everyone in Faerun. The army of the Absolute is marching on Baldur's Gate. Within the city, an Elder Brain, brimming with power, ready to turn everyone within its reach into Mind Flayers. All it needs is an order. An order the Death Gods Chosen are on the cusp of giving. We must wrest control of the Brain from the Chosen before that happens. We must take their stones. Our chances of success are slim, but we must not fail. If we fail, everything ends. I will be your shield, but you must be the sword. And when the chance comes to strike, you must take it, for there may only be one chance. I can't help but feel like I've been fumbling in the dark for too long. I've just had a lit torch thrust into my hands. Indeed. Under other circumstances, I might have been subdued or ashamed. But after what we saw, I must admit, I'm excited. The crown! The one the Elder Brain was wearing. The one I very nearly destroyed. Netherese magic. So pure, so complete, that I didn't even recognize it at first. Most Netherese artifacts contain only the faintest amount of their former power, the ghost of an echo of a memory. That crown was different. I can't fathom how such a wonder survived. Surely everything of its ilk was destroyed along with Netheril itself, but no matter, it exists. I must learn more of it. I know what nearly happened, and I'm sorry for putting you in that position. But I've stepped back from the precipice now. I've seen what may prove to be another way. A better way. That crown sits on a gargantuan elder brain bent on destroying us and everything we hold dear. Understanding its true nature might unlock the means of our victory. We need to learn more about what we saw. An artifact as powerful as that crown must have been documented somewhere. As luck would have it, 
We'll soon find ourselves near one of the finest book collections this side of Candlekeep. Sorceress Sundries. I need to go there and learn all I can. The only kind I have? Their collection of rare tomes is unparalleled. <laughs> Nethery sects are hardly commonplace, but I'm certain they'll have one or two stashed away. You'll have to forgive my eagerness, but if my suspicions prove to hold water, this could be the answer to all our problems. I think we've done rather a good thing here. A welcome change to give this land a sliver of hope amongst so much despair. There's nothing that would give me greater pleasure. More excited than I've been in months. I can't tell you how curious I am to learn more about the crown controlling that elder brain. Believe me when I say how important this could be for me, for both of us. Potentially life-saving, so long as we can learn how it could be taken and used. I've been lied to my whole life. And I was gullible enough to just believe it. My parents are alive, and I have to save them. I think a part of me always knew that. A part that Shah denied to me. Indeed. But the truth may yet prove painful. Who knows what Shah still keeps from me. We'd better press on for now, and hope we're ready when the moment comes. But before that, there's one thing I need to see to. You'll see for yourself soon enough. Just leave it with me. At least Shadowheart is armed with the truth now. May its keen edge draw forth whatever vengeance she desires. The curse has been lifted. The lands cleansed of the shadows. Cethric's reign of living death is over. Your courage has been tested, and in this, at least, you have triumphed. <laughs>